You know, when you look at Herbert Wigwe and the potential achievements that would have come out of all the plans that he had, including what he was doing in the banking sector and how this would possibly impact the Burton Wood institutions. But, you know, interestingly, there was, um, there, you know, there's a site. There is a site, uh, 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 web uh, site in that. Oh, goodness, I can't remember the name of a site now. But... They hack into, they hack into, you know, government computers, computers all over the world and release information. And just last year, they did so and made a, an interesting internet post. And I'm going to talk about that. I hope I can talk about that later, but they made an interesting post. Imply, not even implying, they came right out and said Herbert Wigway's life was in danger and that he was likely to be killed. This was, they, they posted this a few months ago, you know. Not only did they post that, they even fingered those who would be involved in the murder of Herbert Wigg, which is very interesting, very, very interesting. And it was just a few months later that he was killed. We believe that he was murdered. And whether or not it's connected to that post is yet to be seen. But we believe that he, he was murdered. The crash site is a remote area of the desert with an elevation of nearly 3,000 feet. Um, the aircraft did not have a cockpit voice recorder, we are being told, or a flight data recorder. And th- that this was not required um, for them to have this. And this is what we're hearing from the National Trans- Transportation Safety Board coming out of the U- United States. But here we have a family. They're billionaires. They're, they're, they're billionaires. I mean, very, very wealthy and uh, involved in the banking sector. I'm still researching Herbert Wigwe because I'm coming from behind uh, to research this. This is how I saw that there was a prediction that he was going to be killed. Questioning whether or not if how history works isn't more relevant than what history is. Looking at historical representations as vehicles for the transmission of knowledge and how they establish relation to that knowledge. Who controls the processes? What politician? What aggrieved person? What psychopath? What narcissist? From whose perspective is history written, recorded, authenticated, told, and converted into knowledge? These are questions that we must answer in 2024 if we haven't yet. And then to revisit history, we have an obligation to ourselves, our ancestors, and even in contemporary history and as uh, as history is being written even as we speak, to call out those who control the with their history. And why is it that our, when we talk about our African history, we are focusing just on individuals, the first two do this and the first two do that and the first two do that. Our history is much deeper than that. Of course, that is part and parcel of our history. But goodness gracious me, man, how many years are we going to be focusing on the first two do this and the first two do that and the first two do that? So we also have to begin to ask ourselves about what is history, of course, and how history is produced. Why are we so concerned? Only with the first two do that. <laughs> it's a point, you know. Why are we so concerned? Who told us that that is the only thing we must be concerned with? That that is where we should be focusing because that is history. I don't know. I don't know. All right, we've got a lot to get through this morning and we want to go to the phone lines 
after this. No, we don't have a break. We're going to go to the phone lines uh, shortly to speak with Mama Fire. Can we get Mama Fire on the phone lines, please, quickly? Thank you so much. And while we wait for Mama Fire, I don't know if you have been following the sacrifice of our brother from Nigeria, Herbert Wigwe. It's been nine days now since that fateful Friday, February 9, when one of Africa's visionaries, Herbert Wigwe, along with his wife and son, a Nigerian countryman, Ogun Banjo, were killed in a helicopter crash in the Mojave Desert in California. This for us is a cause for concern. Herbert Wigwe, um, 57 years old, he was the CEO of one of Nigeria's largest banks, Access Banks. And his growing presence and his assets extended into several African countries, not just Nigeria. And uh, he was previously the executive director of uh, Guarantee Trust Bank. He also built a private university in the Niger Delta region where he's from. And uh, this university, massive university, was scheduled to open this September to facilitate future generations of Africans to cement their foundation and nucleus for Africa's economic, technological, and political independence. You know, when you look at Herbert Wigwe and the potential achievements that would have come out of all the plans that he had, including what he was doing in the banking sector and how this would possibly impact the Burton Wood institutions. But, you know, interestingly, there was, um, there, you know, there's a site. There is a site, uh, 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 web uh, site in that, oh goodness, I can't remember the name of a site now, but th- they hack into, they hack into, you know, government computers, computers all over the world and uh, release information. And just last year, they did so and made uh, an interesting internet post. And I'm going to talk about that. I hope I can talk about that later. But they made an interesting post. Impli- not even implying. They came right out and said Herbert Wigwe's life was in danger and that he was likely to be killed. This was They, they posted this a few months ago, you know. Not only did they post that, they even fingered those who would be involved in the murder of Herbert Wigwe. It is very interesting, very, very interesting. And it was just a few months later that he was killed. We believe that he was murdered. And whether or not it's connected to that post is yet to be seen. But we believe that he, he was murdered. The crash site is a remote area of the desert with an elevation of nearly 3,000 feet. Um, the aircraft did not have a cockpit voice recorder, we are being told, or a flight data recorder. And that this was not required um, for them to have this. And this is what we're hearing from the National Transportation Safety Board coming out of the United States. But here we have a family. They are billionaires. They're they're billionaires. I mean, very, very wealthy and uh, involved in the banking sector. I'm still researching Herbert Wigwe because I'm coming from behind uh, to research this. This is how I saw that there was a prediction that he was going to be killed. So I want to go back quickly to Herbert Wigwe, but just to say that, um, yes, I believe that he was murdered. We are still following this up. I We're hearing that it could be years before we know um, what happened. But this was, uh, you know, <laughs> um, it, it boggles the mind. There's just, there's, it, it doesn't sit right with me. It doesn't sit right with me. My spirit is bothered about this crash. It, 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 I, I hear people saying that it, 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 it reminds them of the Kobe Bryant crash. It does. It does. Two, Kobe Bryant 2.0. Um, this was murder. This was murder. Straight murder. And uh, I hope that the 
the authorities, both on the side of Nigeria, because it was a Nigerian, um, there are another, there are two Nigerians there, there, there are Nigerians on the side of the Africa Union. I think it's important, even as they meet in Ethiopia right now, and on the side of the United States, I'm sure that if we let this go, then they will cover this up. Right. In the meantime, condolences to the family of Herbert Wigwe, the people of Nigeria. Um, this spurious losses of life like these, it saddens and weakens the African race, you know. So we're paying attention to, we're not dropping it, we're paying attention to what has happened. Um, to Herbert Wigwe. Let me go to the phone lines where Mama Fire is standing by. Mama Fire, morning. Greetings. How you do? Blessed morning, Sister Kabu. Yes. Blessed morning, Sister. Good to hear you, man. Greetings and love, man. Yes. How are things in Portland? Well, first of all, I'm giving thanks for life. Mm hmm. Above everything, I'm just giving thanks for life. But it is not pretty in Portland right now. It's not, it's not pretty in, you say it's not easy in Portland right now? Yes, not pretty in Portland not pretty. Paris right now. For, for you personally, Mama Fire, you, you're saying for your, you and your family? Me and my family and mm-hmm. the other African people and that I see around the place, but I don't know how they measure it, but but this is all I you mentioned. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. Uh, all right, we're going to talk about that, that, that disaster because uh, we're, we're hearing that... Uh, and, and, and you've had you've, you've had a similar situation before that was very stressful for you and your family. But we're hearing yes, that yes. lands that you have leased, that you're farming on, that... Um, you have, you you replanted and all the fruit trees are there, the pear trees, the coconut trees, all the fruit bearing trees. Tree. Yeah. That that yeah. that somehow Apple apples and all other various fruits. I mean a very fruit. Yeah, mango. I used to bring some because sweet mango come here till then in Portland special in call and the Right. All of them the tree they gone to. We are understanding that they were cut down, that uh, somebody came through and without asking permission or asking any question, just leveled the place, just cut down all the, all the fruit trees on, on the land that you're leasing. Do you have, what, do you have any idea what happened? I mean, like who, who, who? who? I don't really know, you know, when I mm-hmm. see them and I go outside and ask them what is really happening because I don't know how people run up in the place and cutting down the fruit tree, them like that. Then so them clearing the the wheel farm road like to run. So but it's GPS going to talk to us. They, 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 they told you that they're clearing the way for electricity, for them to run electricity. So JPS will talk to you. Yes, but I said to them if you're clearing the way to run electricity, I think you take off the one on the front. But I need next expect you to come in the back and cutting down our food tree and all our things that we have here. So, to tell, so tell me, by. tell me what you what you lost on that land. How many trees go down? I mean, is it that them level it? What, what, what what's the situation? More than thirty co- coconut tree, mm-hmm. about two or three breadfruit tree just start there about two years now. Pear tree, apple tree were there a long time. Not to comment the mango tree them bearing. It's from 1975. My brother start that field. The only bottom we do is mango tree, and it feed. I, I can't tell you the nation where this mango tree is. Them a mango tree are in Sister Cabo. Mm. And them was saying thing that he now go live for inherit this mango. Mm. And him say, but I compare it, I inherit a lot of things that people plant before me. Mm-hmm. So if I plant and I don't, they are in a flesh. Other ones will inherit it. And it's this bit going on because my brother are really dead as not killing no. Mm-hmm. About 20 a year, and everybody I reap the mango, and we don't stop. No one tries to see the word fulfilled. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I don't know what is kind of, this kind of living that we are on in this world of Jamaica and right around in this when, when, when did this happen, Mama Fire? Thursday, I see them come and do it, and they are still going through doing, 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 and say that it's good like them going around my sister. And nobody not talk to you yet, whether it's JPS no, or nobody. No one at all, no one at all. And some people say I should go to the police station, I should go to this. But when I look and see 
how long I and I have been penalized and victimized everything that we do in this country here. I don't know who to go to. I don't know who to go well, to. I am going, to uh, well, I am going to make a call to Daryl Vaz. And, and I know that they, you know, I am being monitored from 5.55 until 10. Um, so I'm making a call to Daryl Vaz, who's a member of parliament for the area, isn't he? Is Daryl Vaz a member of parliament for that area? Yes, my sister. Yes, I'm making a call on your behalf to Daryl Vaz. Um, we know that he has it within him to be to to, to be em- empathetic. So he, I'm making a call to him to please um, look at what's happening. Where, where in Portland are you, Mama, Mama Fire? With the place name? I'm right at White Rock, you know, before this year, a little bit out of Buff Bay. Right outside about, White yeah, Rock, yeah, just a little bit out of Buff Bay. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. the name of the place. Um, Mr. Daryl Vaz, uh, whoever is listening, this is, this is, this has happened to Mama Fire. You know Mama Fire very well. Um, these are stalwarts in, 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 in Portland. These are people who keep the culture alive in Portland. And this has happened to her. Now, she is an elder along with her husband, who has been diagnosed with cancer. Mama Fire is a cancer survivor. She's just coming back from surviving uh, <laughs> cancer. Yeah, uh, stage four, she, she's a cancer survivor. Her husband is now going through that, um, diagnosed with cancer, being treated for cancer. And they, but they have been farming. They, they have been, this is how they're making a livelihood. And they, they, and, and they're, they're, key, they're keepers of the culture. Now we are understanding that somehow somebody passed through and raised, cut down every, all of them coconut tree, all of them breadfruit tree, all of them apple tree, all of the fruit bearing trees on their land from which they are making a living. Somebody please tell Mr. Darrell Vance to go pay some attention to what is happening up there. Yes, we're calling to the, politi- uh, the politician. We are calling, you know, because I understand what's happening in Portland and I know that is the level that we have to go. So don't ask me how I'm not calling on anybody else. Is the politician I'm calling on? Mr. Daryl Vance, please, please go to White Rock outside of Buff Bay. You know where Mama Fire is. Find out what is happening. Find out what is happening. Mama Fire, please take it easy. Remember that you, we know that, you know, you're just coming through an illness. You, um, Father Fire is now going through his own illness. By the way, how is Father Fire? He's not too bad, you know. He's moving around, so we have to say he's not too bad. And mm-hmm. pressure is there, but he's trying to hold it up. Hold yes. on. Yes. And, and, and some Thursday, the whole family is in a mourning state because it comes like it's a lot of people, are, a lot of things with life have been destroyed and die and just lay down and we have to watch everything dead. I know. So it's, it's, it's a whole strong still, yes. you know, because... We have been through it so much times already, but it's really hard. Yes, I got you over and over. I know it's painful. I know it's painful, you know. Yes. Everywhere, mm. Rasta going to Jamaica, and they are like a place, and they're not giving a land. Because we did come off and go around from the riverside, and from the river bank, we have enough things more around here now. Yes. And then come and mash with them, see we are around I remember that we, co- I remember that we covered that here, that they, they mashed down the entire thing, running off of the land, and here you are now on land that you're, you've leased, you're paying. Yeah, come back here, so car here, so we did there before. And that too. was here. So you've leased this land, you're paying your lease, Mama Fire. Yes, I leased this place from railway. I was here from, I, I am here from 1975, until railway come in now and collecting lease. I'm here still. You know, this is so sad. This is so sad. One of the things, I, 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 for, for farmers, you know, for people who dig the earth and put something on the earth and watch it come up and watch it bear, you know, it's to lose that, you know, and, and for people who talk to the tree before them even pick the fruit, to have somebody come <laughs> in and just to, 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 to massacre. This is, this is, this is like death. This is, that's why you're mourning because it yes. is, it is a painful experience. You know, my son plant some jelly trees, sister Cabo, and him all a plan and say, two of them are jelly, you know, I think make your drink. Well, here we go, I bring you, and we give us a side by one. And I, him and that mama, I be drinking the weird big. Yeah. And he make that one, and I she and her king man drinking the weird big. And I, and my, my son, the day I grew up and him come home with his wife, and at the same time when he sick, in 2010, and that you would come and drive him to go up at the coconut wood and buy all these suckers and plant them. I see them up here in you know, 10 years' time. 
It's not. It's and, not right. And, and it, everything yes. gone down the and drain. Then, and third, third, and then vandalize them. Turn around and vandalize the people who could do come under the destruction. They vandalize everything because no one respect us to come and tell me like how them do and make your kid start reap off, harvest off some of your things. You don't go see them come in and then start to cut and who run down go there, who take jelly, who take this, and do what they want to do. So I don't know, I don't know. That it's is, sad. yeah, it's a sad, 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 sad um, case. And if you were some conscious um, people that you over the radio, you know, I say, Lord God, I just happened to Mama Fire and I just she and her family have to retaliate to mm. because if we did retaliate to war, they would either kill we or we kill them. Mm. But we know we couldn't do that because mm. we are for humanity and we can't mm. just know that we can't live in a war. JPS, JPS, Mama Fire was told that they were doing, whoever did this, you know, whoever massacred the, the, the land, whoever vandalized the space, they, they, they told her that they were doing it in your name. So you also have an obligation, JPS, right now, right now, to find out what happened and to compensate as possible. I don't know how you compensate somebody for cutting down them. You see, money can't buy this, you know. When, when a farmer <laughs> puts a seed in other, in other land and watch it grow, uh, there's no level of compensation, but at least a gesture of compensation. Uh, Mama Fire, I really feel it in my heart. I'm telling you, I, I feel it for you and, and, and the family. And I, w- I will follow up on this and see where it goes. In the meantime, this is happening while you're preparing for the bingy. Yes, while I'm preparing for the buckle of Adawa. Tell us about it. years now, me am on the buckle for you because you know, I prepare for the buckle. Me I prepare for the victory. Yes. Because you now I think we are celebrating the victory. The victory at Adawa. Because yes. the buckle have been won. And if it was the other nation who fight against the, 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 the Ethiopian, I think they would keep in their history alive for their children, children, generation, generation to come to know about it. Is, so, is, so, that, so, so, so just, at our, just so our listeners know, the, 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 the victory at Adwa, the celebration, the bingi, will still be on, um, yes, even though you're going through this. What dates? Well, we are gathering on the 29th to light the fire overnight to meet the first, you know, like just as our impressed I too was on the battlefield from the night, the overnight to really rise up in the morning of the first of March, 1896 to really go to battle. That's the far right. That is why I and I still are doing it, you know, keeping the remembrance of that battle towards the victory. All right. All right. All right. So we, we'll talk, we'll talk to you again, um, next week about it some more, but just to let ones and ones know that the, 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 the celebration the, of, of the victory at Ottawa, the, the, the bingy is still on, are going to be on the 20, give me the date again, the 20. The 29th will be gathering. All right. For, for the back. So, so the work is going on now. The work is going on yes. now. Um, work is going on I can now. just imagine the problems. That, well, anyway, let me just say problem. The challenge is that you you must be facing with all of your because part of that whole celebration is a first fruit is en- ensuring that the first fruits are in. But all of the all of those chopped down and gone. <laughs> I you feel like Mama two man, my son, I prepare up the jelly them for the rest of them, mm-hmm. and we have to prepare up the things them for the rest of them. All are gone, but give thanks life is here. I will not survive. Yes. I will keep in touch with you, Mama Fire. And can I just call on the community? Let me now call on the community to make a yes. call. If you're in Portland, please make a call to Daryl Vaz and the JPS. Let us let us assist Mama Fire and Father Fire, who are already dealing with serious health issues, working now on the on the Naya Bingi. Let us make these reports. Let us call people who we know to find out what really happened and to say pay some attention to the to Mama Fire and our family in Portland. Thank you so much, Mama Fire. Yes, and All yeah, the there are people who, who, who say them in the morning to feed them. Wake up. Like we wake up and stand together as a people. Yes. We know how we are going to survive a love ago. Blessed yes. love, Mama. Give, give thanks. thanks. Give thanks, Mama Fire. Hold strong. Blessed, Cabo. Blessed, blessed. Blessed Father Fire, are you yes, that? Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, man. yeah, man. We are going to link up and talk a little more. Yeah, yes, Father Fire. Yeah, man. Hold train. We link. All right, Mama. Give thanks. Man. Give thanks, Father. Thank you so much for joining us inside of the 
Forum this morning. Once again, please uh, let us see what we can do to uh, assist Mama Fire. Make the first call to somebody, JPS, Daryl Vaz, somebody. I'm getting lots and lots and lots and lots of uh, messages to say, um, say to Mama Fire that our hearts are with her, that we support her and so on. And so from some of these messages, I'm going to ask you to please uh, send a text, send a message, call somebody uh, to assist Mama Fire because it's a bit overwhelming for them. And there are other considerations that they are not, they are not able to um, do what we can do from where we are. So please see what you can do. Agenda 2063 is a continental development plan. All right. Uh, I thought I was playing your music. <laughs> All right. So we have a very, very special guest in, la- in in studio, live in the studio with me right now. And I uh, want to have a quick chat with her. Uh, you're going to be blown away, actually. My very special guest is a young violinist and she's making waves internationally you would have seen her heard her or uh, heard about her she's leah flynn one of the youngest black violinists who aims to defy the odds and establish herself in the classical music industry she got up very early to make it here for seven o'clock to be in the studio so we already see the kind of person that she is very very serious she was introduced to the piano at an early age and she'll be telling us about that both her parents i think are here with her they're not in studio right now but they also have a keen interest in music and she'll also be telling us about that so let's go now to my very special guest in studio, Leah Flynn. Leah, welcome to IRFM. Welcome to the Africa Forum. Thank you for having me. Thank you for getting up so early. <laughs> yes. To be here. Mm-hmm. Are you ready to play and everything? Yeah. I you heard? I'm mm-hmm. sorry I didn't tell you to wear a jacket. It's going yeah. to be cold. Uh-huh. You need a shawl or something? Yeah, but it's okay. You, you, you're you're going to need some. Okay. <laughs> All right, Shamara. Shamara has come in this morning. Welcome, Shamara. Good to have you in the, in, physically in the space. So we're going to get a shawl for you. Um, Leah, uh, so you are a violinist. How, how did you, how did, who introduced you to the instrument in the first place? Mm-hmm. So I've always been quite musical. My dad started me on the piano when I was three. And then two years later, he decided to just start me on the violin. He got the inspiration, and he thought that that would be a good fit. And turns out he was right. So. Really? So, you, so, and, and we just said earlier, you, both your parents are interested and, and involved in music. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about that. Yeah. So, my dad comes from a musical family. Um, you know, most of his siblings plays the piano or some instrument of some kind he grew up playing the piano playing in churches all over so so you couldn't be saved from this really no (laughs) it is what it is (laughs) and your mom she's not really that musical but she's still supportive so Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right uh and so your background is even though you're you're african-american your background is jamaican right Mm -hmm. uh is it your dad who's jamaican both of them my mom and dad okay but you were born and yeah, I was born in America. I was born in New York, but okay. they're both Jamaicans. Mm-hmm. So. so what was that like growing up as, uh, identifying as an African-American, growing up in a Jamaican home? What mm-hmm. was that like for you? Well, I mean, obviously, since my parents are Jamaican, they obviously brought a lot of the culture with them to America. You know, the food and the way that they talk and the people. And, you know, it's nice to have that. But, you know, to have that sense of, like, culture, um you know, with me, um, as well as still being African American. So, you know, it's a balance, but. So I suppose you're bilingual. Uh, yeah. I mean, Jamaican language? <laughs> yeah. Plus English. So, so let me do like a Jamaican. Talk, okay. you know, some Jamaican language for me. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about yourself in the Jamaican language. Okay. Um, <laughs> like, my name is. Okay. Um, oh, my name. Can I, he's not going to do that. My name. My name. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not name. <laughs> um, what is it? Name. Name. Yeah, yeah. Name. My name is Leah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave you. Go ahead. Talk. So, so tell us about yourself. Uh-huh. Uh, just so your name, you know, um, where you, where you live now, um, mm-hmm. the school you attend and so on. All of that in Jamaican for me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> my name is Leah. 
Um, I'm from Florida. Where did I come from? I come from Florida. <laughs> and um, I go to Trinity Prep. <laughs> Thank you. Feeling, I, I honestly feel it for you. Yeah. Oh, that was really rude of me. But anyway, <laughs> welcome. We're very happy to have you in the studio with Thank me. Thank you. Um, so, so your journey now, because you've been playing the, the instrument, uh, the violin, you started at an early age. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the process like? How did you, um, you say so you started pretty young. How did you move into being a professional violin player? Mm-hmm. What was that process like? So, you know, starting when I was five, I obviously started, you know, with the regular beginning exercises that everyone does. And for the violin, it definitely came to me a lot more naturally than the piano did. So, it, I mean, not that it wasn't difficult to start learning, but it was an easier experience for me. So obviously I started young with like um private teachers um, who helped me definitely because if I didn't have that, I also was in an orchestra for like four to five years and I was young too so having that as well kind of helped me you know figure out what I wanted to do and then you know pick out my solo pieces work on that do various you know performances so Mm -hmm. I and I know I'm going to start very early with this we want to talk a a lot more about (coughs) your journey Mm -hmm. but um early at the top I'm going to take a quick break and come back and we, we, we listen to one of your classical pieces right or, any, or, or you're going to do one, love. Yeah. The one love yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah. All right. So, see, so you get a shawl here. Oh, is that, is that what, who do you? All right. It belonged to her. <laughs> 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 all right. So, let, let's take a quick break. I will come back and do that. Right? Mm-hmm. 7.31, and we're featuring in this segment of the program. I'm very happy to have her in the studio with me. Young violinist, um, making waves internationally. Uh, Leo Flynn, one of the youngest black violinists who... Um, you heard her just now, so you know that she really is defying the odds and she really is um, doing brilliantly. Uh, introduced, she told us, to the piano at age three by her dad and to the violin at age five. We're also joined in studio by a uh, publicist, Leah's publicist, host of The Release, CEO of TaylorMade Events and PR Management, Talisa Taylor. Talisa, hi. Talisa, listen on. Put on the phone. <laughs> She's doing all of it. I know you are PR, aren't you? <laughs> all right. Welcome, my sister. How are you doing? Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Ariathem is another home for me. Yeah. Home away from home. Yes. Well, listen, we're very happy to have you in the studio. Um, you look like you belong. Believe me, you look like you belong. You just walked in and cleaned the place. <laughs> It is what it is. Um, so, so you're a publicist um, for for Talisa. How long? For, sorry, for for Leah. How long? I've only been working with Leah for under a year, just okay. a couple of months. But okay. it has been so incredible. I absolutely love her spirit. Funny enough. I have been working with her, but it's the first time I'm meeting her since she got to Jamaica. Okay. So I met her yeah. on the phone, but in person, it's yes. the first time I'm meeting her. Mm-hmm. First time you're meeting her totally, totally, totally. In person. In, in person. person. Yes. Well, introduce <laughs> yourself. <laughs> No, this is crazy. I know. Mm-hmm. No wonder so, you have the phone out. I know. So I'm, 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 I'm always so excited to, yeah. I, I mean, I get to work with a lot of amazing personalities. I know how public work, that you're yes. not, you don't always meet the yes. person that you're working with. <laughs> but I'm but, telling yeah. you, amazing young lady, very intelligent yeah. Yeah. and super talented. Wow. She is. I mean, yes. listen, we're hearing her. And as you said, very, very intelligent. Um, you told us, um, Leah, just know that. So you were introduced to the piano, first of all, at age three. Yes. And then to the violin. Do you still play the piano? I mean, occasionally. I wouldn't say I, like, play it, like, really well or anything. But I'll occasionally go on it and play a couple of chords. But it's nothing serious. This is crazy. Just go on and play a couple of chords. Well, not what we can't do is sit in front of the <laughs> piano and I just go on and play a couple of chords. But um, any other musical instruments? So the piano, the violin? No, 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 no. Just those two. All okay. right. What what is your school day like? Because obviously, mm-hmm. I, I want to look at that plus your regimen, uh, your training, and that kind of discipline that you obviously have. Mm-hmm. We noticed that with the time you got here this morning. Yeah. Yes. So um, I typically wake up six thirty seven, drive to school, 
spend like day at school, then three o'clock um, is dismissal, and then depending on my day, sometimes I'll have like a lesson after school for an hour, or I'll have tutoring, um, or some days I don't have anything. But if I had a lesson, then I'd go to my lesson from like three thirty to four thirty. Um, maybe get dinner, come home, do my homework, um, hang out, you know, with my family, and then relax, go to bed. So you find time to hang out. Yeah, a you little. Know that. A little. Yeah. Um, what kind of a discipline does it take? Do you is it natural to you after playing for so long, or do you have to really remind yourself? Mm-hmm. to be this discipline. I mean, obviously it doesn't come easy like practicing nothing is easy. It's like a lot of hard music and you have to really make sure that you get everything right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, doing doing it, I have to remind myself to keep going, to do it consistently every day for a certain amount of time even when I don't want to. So, yeah, especially mm-hmm. being busy with school and everything. Mm-hmm. What are you doing in school? Good. I'm doing all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> and so for your, what about friendships? Because uh, are your friends within the music industry themselves or are you able to go outside of that and cultivate other friendships? Yeah, so they're not, I mean, obviously, like I play in an orchestra at school. So I have a couple of friends there who like play the violin, not like professionally or anything. They just like play it for school. And then I do have friends outside of that um, who are just like regular people that I'm mm-hmm. friends with from mm-hmm. school as mm-hmm. well. So. How important is it for um, African Americans to do something like this, what you're doing, um, considering everything else? We're talking about the challenges that African American young people go through. Racism, not the least of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's definitely not difficult. I mean, it definitely is difficult um, to be an African American playing, you know, the violin, which is a very difficult instrument, and as well as classical music. Um, and there is a um, serious lack of diversity. You know, there's only like 2% of African Americans in orchestras like worldwide. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there being such a lack of diversity, it's really important that I do this and that I am able to do my best to make a difference. Mm-hmm. The, uh, do you face racism along the way? Uh in the music industry, I'm speaking, especially because of what the kind of um, industry that you are concentrating on, the classical music industry, playing in orchestra, so on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so definitely. I mean, you know, there's kind of like a passive aggressive, and it's just like they're kind of just like you can tell they're not like openly, openly, but the way that they speak or the way that you know sometimes I get looked over when someone else is doing something can be a way of them showing, you know. How do you deal with that? You know, I try not to let it get to me. Obviously, sometimes it it still can, and it's, you know, frustrating. But I try to, you know, you know, just prove them wrong and show that I can do it. Do you get lost in the music? Sometimes, yeah, (laughs) especially if it's... I can can just imagine how challenging it is for you, you know, as a a young person. And then you talk about getting looked over. Mm -hmm. Um, Is that often or... I mean, yeah, it occasionally happens, you know, Mm. like being like, you know, not taken seriously and people Mm -hmm. not really understanding or thinking that what Mm -hmm. I'm doing is a good or a big thing. So, you know. What about African-Americans now and your peers? Mm -hmm. Um, How do they view what you're doing? Um, I like to think that they, you know, are inspired and that they, you know, want to do it even more now because I'm showing them that they can. So... Mm -hmm. Talking about inspired, what inspire you and who are some of your inspirations <laughs> in the music business? Um, well, my two favorite violinists, I'd probably say, is um, it's Chuck Perlman and Julia Fisher. Well, not Julia Fisher, but her two, but also um, Hilary Hahn, um, those two, as well as just, you know, people that, like my teacher and other people that play the music professionally that I can look mm-hmm. up to. And have you been playing, well, you're playing on orchestra, so tell us about some of that professional work that you're doing in terms of how you're playing, where you're playing, mm-hmm. and who you're playing with. Yeah, yeah, So I played in a youth orchestra from when I was five to nine, and that was a really good experience, but i say what I really got, like, an orchestra experience is when I went away in the summer to NYO2, which is, like, National Youth Orchestra. 
orchestra and that was like we had you know hard rehearsal days we were with like we were playing difficult pieces we had a conductor and we had to make sure that we like understood each and every part that we knew where to come in where to not come in you know and it was it was a unforgettable experience mm-hmm. so can you play any of those difficult pieces for us this morning we don't have any accompaniment okay. have, right yeah. but, do, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. do a solo Okay. Um, are you ready? Yeah, sure. Okay, all right. Okay, so let, 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 let's get her standing again and, um, and the microphone set up. Uh, she's live with us in the studio. We're enjoying, um, this morning, believe me, with our young one in studio with us, Leah Flynn. As we told you before, one of the, uh, youngest black violinists who, as she said in her own words, she aims to defy the odds and to establish herself in the classical music industry. She's going to do a solo for us now. Before that, you heard Bob Marley and that we had the soundtrack, but here is Leah Flynn. <laughs> No, thank you. Thank you for that. Wow. That touched my spirit, touched my soul, touched my heart, just touched all the tear ducts because I am literally tearing up just watching you uh, perform. Your fingers flying like crazy. Um, the concentration just, you just get, you just get lost in, 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 uh, you become one with the instrument. Yes. That's yes, basically yes. what that is. Mm-hmm. It's an extension of you. Yes, definitely. Uh, Beautiful. Talisa, that, that's something, isn't it? I got cold bumps. <laughs> I, I, I got cold bumps. 
mum. <laughs> This is, this is, you, your parents must be very proud of you, everything else aside. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Thank you. You know, uh, wow, this is so, how old are you? 16. You do lie. No. <laughs> <laughs> you serious? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, wow, this is, this is crazy good. Um, uh, and we talked earlier about the discipline that this must take. Yes. And yes. now I know that just watching you that this is not no easy discipline. Mm -hmm. In other words, you, this is some serious commitment that you have to this. Um. Yes, definitely. You know, you have to like really put in the work and, you know, really, you know, push yourself. Um, but you know, it has a good outcome in the end. So how many hours per day do you? Um, well, I try to do like one to two hours a day, especially if I don't have, um, like a lesson or anything after school. Um, you know, really make sure that, you know, I put in everything that I need to do, the most important things, you know, the classical music, everything like that. Mm -hmm. Do you read classical music? Can yes. You read music. Can you read the music sheet? Yeah, yeah. That's how you learn it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So who taught you to read music? How did you learn? Um, I guess uh, my teachers and mm -hmm. my dad as well helping me, you know, know because he's like a huge thing with music theory and everything. Mm -hmm. So he kind of like helps me know what notes for notes and, you know, figure that out. And then I kind of just learned along the way. Mm -hmm. Do you listen, you know, um, for example, I know... Well, it's, it's, when we were growing up, right, we listened to this on the radio. So we turn on the radio in the evening time, a Sunday evening, and we hear a lot of classical music, and that was good because we're not get it nowhere else. I mean, mm -hmm. this is the only place that we were going to get it on a Sunday evening, and um, so we didn't have a, a lot of places to to, to to get this from. But well, do you do you listen to classical music at all? Is it something that you tune into? And this is the music I listen to. Or are you listening to other types of music? Um, I listen to all kinds of music, but yeah, sure, I'll listen to classical here now because it, it i mean everyone thinks you know classical music might be boring and not no, but not. it really isn't like if you listen to the like yeah. good pieces it's it's no it's not it's not and it, you're, you're right um i enjoy classical music mm -hmm. um one of my favorites actually but so so just listening to you it, it's no different from being in a concert <laughs> or you know just listening to a solo from one of the greats you know so this yeah. is this is really good all right we'll take a quick break let's come back safe reliable great value Always buy from an authorized IGL dealer. The time by IGL is... Now, 7.46, you're inside of the Africa Forum. It's African History Month, and we're featuring in the, in the space this morning a young violinist, Leah Flynn. Um, she is brilliant. I'm just 16 years old and focused on classical music with, obviously, the support of those around her. her. Her mom says she was up, well, she knew she was going to be on the program this morning, and she was up, you know, in, at the same time I got up, one about four o'clock or thereabouts, so or just around, you know, yeah. one of right? Yeah. Because, and, and this is, and as I'm saying, um, Leah, uh, sorry, um, Talisa, that when I saw her, when I got the note, when Shamara came and said, okay, well, she's here, and her parents are here, the first thing I thought to myself was, this is a disciplined young girl. I didn't see her yet, but that's the first thing I thought to myself. What do you think of that as her publicist? Because you've been working with her. Is this a normal, usual thing with her? Yes, it is. And I applaud her for it. She's 16 years old, and I've been working with artists for over 10 years. And I, can I tell you that I don't have an issue <laughs> with Leah any at all. And I've worked with yeah. quite a few persons. She, she She's on time. Yeah, like Muto. The only person I know like Elsa that is Muto Baruka. Uh -huh. where she, he's never late. Uh -huh. and, he, and, and this is this is something I noticed with him from the very, very early stages that Muto is never late. And if he's late, mm -hmm. then you need to make a call. You know, something mm -hmm. is wrong. So, and, and when I heard that she was here, this is the first thing I thought. I said, okay, young Muto. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, she's disciplined in that way mm -hmm. uh, but but with your own experiences you're saying this is this is really not necessarily the normal thing is no it? it's not normally mm -hmm. when persons are I would say talented let's put it that way when they're talented and they know they're talented there's a, there's a little bit of ego that comes with that D diva you know right and yeah. I don't find that with her yeah. I find a pure spirit and someone who's easy to work with 
punctual and just overall a very kind person. She's a very kind-hearted individual. You get that from her. Warm. So what's going to be happening um, with her on the island? Because obviously she's in mm-hmm. Jamaica. For, since when? Well, let, let her have a, a bit of... Uh, let me turn your microphone off while, while you eat. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So, so unfortunately, Leah leaves tomorrow. I really wish she could have stayed a little bit longer with us. Yes. She has only been here just for a couple of days just to do some press runs. Because yes. I'm trying to introduce Jamaica to who Leah really is. Right. And, and you can see that she yes. has so much to offer. Yes. And um, But I am looking to have her here back in March. Okay. Um, so if persons are interested in working with Leah, they can definitely hit of us course. up. And Leah has has been growing an interest, uh, an interest in reggae a little bit more. Yes. Um, especially being here and embracing the culture a lot more um so we are looking to have her back in march to do a lot more runs and a lot more activities and stuff right. yeah and, and and you should come back in august with shamara for the ogavi event nice. um that's another thing she should be on the gavi event. Nice. talk to shamara about that all right great, great. <laughs> it's not for me to do but but i think she'll be brilliant on mm-hmm. stage um in the in the great house um for that event um but she's leaving on uh, she's leaving tomorrow yes. so any international um uh, performances in the works i am not sure Leah. do you have any let me turn the microphone yes <laughs> um not as of right now but mm-hmm. you know in the future maybe yeah all right um so at, at your age you've got a publicist Mm-hmm. <laughs> At sixteen, yeah, yes, yes. Well, you go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, wh- wh- why was a publicist necessary? Uh, because we wanted to like um, grow my social media more because mm-hmm. it kind of was in just like a stagnant place, and we mm-hmm. wanted to really make it flourish, and you know make people know of me more so mm-hmm. we decided to get her. well well yes because here you are <laughs> you know um so uh, t- where can we find you on the social media um so instagram facebook and others at leah flynn violin okay say that again at leah flynn violin okay and anywhere that that's it right. at leah yeah. flynn yeah. and flynn is F-L-Y-N-N and Leah is L-E-A-H. So you can find her um, anywhere. Um, for young people who are interested, and, and I'm sure you'll get this question a lot, but for young people who are interested in being serious about music, because one of the things we know in Jamaica is that if you have a child who goes to prep school in particular, they're going to play a, a, a musical instrument. If they're in a the primary school, they're going to be introduced to music at some level, not necessarily as seriously as we would want. And they develop interest in musical instruments. But what we find on the island, and, and tell me if, I, if I'm if I'm wrong, um, Talisa, is that yes, a child will play, uh, but it's a handful really at the end of the day who will continue to play outside of the primary prep school um, age group. Isn't that so? Yes, it's a discipline, the lack of discipline. Yes, and I'm not quite sure if also the, the system doesn't mm-hmm. allow, but, but so you have to push against the system, I think. Really? But, but what, what is your advice, um, Leah, to young people who are listening and their parents who are listening mm-hmm. who are interested in taking their mu- playing music to that next level, that professional level? Mm-hmm. Well, to that, I'd say, you know, don't give up, um, persevere. And even though it may be difficult at times, I would know, you know, just to keep going because you're going to have a great outcome in the end. Don't give up. Don't what give are up. some of the, and we know we talk about racism, but what are some of the, the, the difficulties that they would, you think, um, young people might face? within your own context along the way yeah so besides racism you could also experience you know just being tired and just like because especially if you're playing a lot of pieces and you're doing this and that and the other i know i definitely you know feel tired sometimes in pain and you just or like you're doing you know practicing a certain piece and you can't get it and you feel like you're not able to do it things like that but you know just to keep going regardless how do you not give up? I, mean, I don't even expect you to answer, but how do you not give up? I mean, what what makes you um, stick to it and not mm-hmm. say in frustration with everything else, this mm-hmm. is it, you know? Um, um, I think that I just, I look forward to like the future where all of this is worth something. And, mm-hmm. you know, as I said, like there is a good outcome in the end. You have so a just, goal and you're yeah. working towards, towards mm-hmm. that goal. Yes. Uh, 
In, in terms of, we, we talk just now about you being able to read music. Do you also write your own? Do you compose? I mean, when I was little, I used to, and I, I liked it, but I haven't, <laughs> I haven't really done so. Um, when I was little, I used to compose. Yeah. That's like, what you just said, you know, you well, know that though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like little as in like <laughs> yeah. 10, 11, I like, you know, I would like write my own songs or whatever, and I haven't since, but. So tell us about that piece you, you played just now. Um, so that was Paganini, uh, Caprice number five. Um, he has 24 Caprices and I played the fifth one. Been working on that for a few months. So, yeah. How did you, because for us, you know, it's like perfect. <laughs> did you, for you, was it perfect? I mean, did you, did you lose a note anyway? Because we wouldn't know. I mean, I'm just saying it to you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, no, it definitely wasn't perfect. I could have done it better, but you know, things happen. So. Right. Uh, I, I let me get back to the composition now and, and you composing. Those that you composed when you were younger, mm -hmm. um, are you able to play any now? Or did you, have you not practiced them? No, 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 no. Those, and it wasn't like violin. It was okay. like singing and playing the piano with it. Okay. So you mm -hmm. also sing? I mean, I wouldn't say I'm a singer, but yeah, sure. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let, let me hear it. <laughs> what am I supposed to sing? What, that little piece you composed? Uh, I don't even know how it goes. Um, just, what, the parts you can't remember, just hum them. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. uh, <laughs> okay, let's see. I know, we're taking her totally by surprise. <laughs> yeah. But she's rising to the occasion. What? She just pulled the microphone to her and everything. Okay. Yes. Like, I'll just make something up. Mm. Um... <laughs> I can't do this. Um, she's coming see. with it. Well, you go and think about it. Me, okay. me, 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 no, she, she, I know she's going to do it because she's ready. She pulled the microphone to her and everything. She's not know. shy like that. Are you ready? <laughs> but if it's too but, late. Okay, but like the song, the songs that I composed were like years ago. Like I don't remember them. I'd have to like sing something. All right, that okay. I know, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. <clears throat> See. I'm going to give her time to think about it mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> I've come back and have that song of five minutes going up to eight o'clock and yeah so we're going to go back to the Sigma run at around 8.20 just before the uh, cash board draw but um, this is another thing I like about uh, Leah Talisa because I'm I'm seriously putting her on the spot, and she's re <laughs> and she is ready. You know, she's ready. she just needs to. That song just needs to come, and she's mm -hmm. going to sing it. Mm -hmm. So that that oh, that's, that's that's phenomenal in any case, because I've done this with many people in this space, and they oh. haven't. <laughs> Let me turn mm -hmm. off our mic for sure. Eat at the same time, <laughs> right? So um, so I, I noticed that about her because the minute we asked, she pulled the mic microphone mm -hmm. to her, and she was ready to sing. Ready for a challenge? Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> Um, what are, so about you though, as a, as a publicist, who are some of the other people you work with? Oh, wow. Quite a few persons. Um, I have worked with both businesses and I've worked with artists as well. I've worked with Steph London. I've worked with D'Angel over the years. I've worked with G Wiz. I've worked with Cheese on there so much. A whole lot. I, yes. I know. You've been in the business. I, yes, yeah. I have. I, um, I've worked with, um, a vacay weekend that's coming up as mm -hmm. well here in Ochi. I have I, worked I, you with. You are such a publicist. I, How did you get that in? I, you know, That's I, know, like an artist. I, pl I, I plug a lot of stuff. I plug all of my people all the time. Yeah, all right. So that's um, coming up. Yeah. So all it's, right, it's yeah. pretty amazing. And being a publicist is funny. You get to meet amazing people, but mm -hmm. I pride myself in making my clients famous. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let's put it that way. You're doing pretty well. Um, how did you, uh, did you tell us how did you get, how did you get to, to connect her, with, to connect with her, to be her publicist and to be just meeting her this morning? Oh my gosh. Yes. It's so weird how the world works. So last year, I, after 10 years of doing PR last year, I said to myself, I was going to throw in a towel. I was not going to do PR anymore. I was tired. I said, you know what? I'm going to shift my focus. I'm going to do something else. This is not for me anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. I really had that mindset. And then a friend of mine said, no, I really need you to meet this young lady. When I spoke to her mother, I said to her, oh my God, you know, I'm really not taking on any clients right now. And her mother said, don't worry, you're going to love Leah. Leah is amazing. So in my mind, I'm saying, yes, they're all amazing, aren't they? Oh gosh, I was so down, so out. And just saying, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, I'm really just tired after 10 years and mm -hmm. I really just need a break. I want to do something different. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
I met Leah. Well, not not met her in person, but, but we understand. I, yeah, I, the- I, I ended up knowing mm. her brand yes. and falling in love with the brand. And then I couldn't throw away PR anymore. And then I was just like, no, 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 no. I would have to work with her. Mm-hmm. I have to work with her. And, and when her mother explained to me the challenges she's been facing as an African-American, mm-hmm. it reminded me when I first started in television and someone said to me, at the time I was hosting my own program, mm-hmm. and someone said to me, I will assist you you with a program if you're not hosting it and when I asked them why they said to me you just don't have the look to be on TV but then you know remember we, we says ha- that, no no we have that in common because uh, my yeah. first my first thing was TV and I got that too oh, wow. that um I was too dark, my skin color. Mm-hmm. I was too black for TV. Yes. Yes, I was too black when I just entered. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. So when I when that hit yeah. me, I was I was saying, What? Yeah. People really like I've heard about it before, but when you experience it, it's a that. total different yes. thing. Yes. I had to come off my own program, mm. get a new host just to be able to get it on particular platforms. Are you serious? And then when the program became popular, I was now able to call my own shots. And because of that, I, and, and there is no discrimination Which to any. What program was that? It's the release. Oh, yes. Yeah. The release now, yes. Wow. And it's so funny because. And what a success. It is. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank by you the way. so yeah. much. And it's so funny. And it's no discrimination to any light skinned persons, but all of my hosts are dark skinned. <laughs> and, and that's on purpose. And I'm sorry, but that's on purpose. And, I and I've kept yeah. it like that because yeah. I know what we have to go through and I don't go with what the norm is. Yes. I don't look for norms. So when I'm doing an audition for a host, if you come in with all the makeup, in the world and all the hair and all the this mm-hmm. that doesn't sell it for mm-hmm. me it's the personality that yeah, sells it for yeah. me so when I met Leah and I realized that Leah has gone through probably you know worse than I, I have but it's still I, I still understood what she was going through and so young um, were you mm-hmm. able um, I, I I don't know why I have this thing in my head maybe because it's a protective thing for, for, for young ones to say they're facing the racism but especially in the UK the US Europe and so on they're facing racism but they're not able to define what it is so in a, in a way they are insulated but, but were you able to you, d- what, what did you know what did you feel so, uh, so in that moment like I could feel that they treated me differently um, because of how I looked maybe and so because of that it was kind of like I could feel like there was a difference or some sort of tension. So you felt that. Mm. Yeah, not not a good thing either. Mm-hmm. So. And and this is something that, are you, how prepared are you? Are you prepared for this? Like, you know, you expect this and so that you are you're yeah, prepared? Yeah, yeah, I, I try, I like go into it knowing that, you know, not everybody is going to like me, not everybody mm-hmm. is going to agree mm-hmm. with what I'm doing, but... I'm going to do it. Regardless. How do you balance not being a victim but being a a, a, a successful person? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just try to look at the good side of it because you know there are many people who do enjoy my music and do enjoy what I do. So I try to focus on that more than focus on the negative people. Yeah. So my husband was at home showing off because he sent me a text to say, "Kabu, ask him about the piece called Bumblebee if it is Paganini." And I, I, you know, I'm just reading what I'm just reading what he sent. I, I don't have a clue what he's saying. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. I've definitely heard of that. I do think that it is Paganini. Um, oh, so you understood all, all of that? No. What is he I mean, asking? What is he asking? Exactly? I think he's, I th- okay, so there's, there's like the flight of the bumblebee, which I think he might be asking, which is like the fastest piece in the world. Oh. Um, and then since Paganini writes a lot of pieces like that, Caprice, which was fast, you mm. know, if that was written by him, I actually don't think it is, um, cause, you know, I would have heard. You would have heard. Right. So, um, thank you for answering that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to take a next break. We'll be right back. Okay. Only Optical Elements has the latest technology lenses and frames to suit your taste and budget. Visit us at 67 Halfway Tree Road, online at OpticalElementsJA.com or call 929-8284. Optical Elements, vision in style. The time by Optical Elements is... Now, two minutes after 8 o'clock, you're inside of the Africa Forum. This is 
running Africa and two very special guests in line. Our young violinist, uh, Leah Flynn, making waves internationally uh, in the island just just for a breeze. She'll be leaving uh, tomorrow. Her publicist is uh, Talisa Taylor. Uh, Talisa, is, as you heard, is a host of the release, CEO of TaylorMade Events and PR Management. And, of course, you'll be hearing about, you have been hearing about uh, Leah Flynn, who's been with us since... Uh, uh, over half an hour um, now. Now, Leah, what next for you? You're going back uh, tomorrow. What does your your roster, your schedule look like for your music? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't have much as of currently. I'm just going to, you know, go home, go back mm-hmm. to school in my life. But, you know, I definitely have things coming up in the future for mm-hmm. me to do. So. so, Have you performed in Jamaica before? Um, yes, I think I have when, um, but years ago when I was okay. younger. Okay. Mm-hmm. So are you looking forward to, you know, a concert in Jamaica? Yes, I would definitely not be opposed to that. I think that'd be fun. Right. Mm-hmm. She can do a solo concert, you know. Oh, trust me. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But in the meantime, we would, you're coming back in March, we just heard. So we'd like to see you wherever you go. Okay. Uh, what, what is the one thing that you would want to do in terms of your performances, um, of where you perform? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I like to really perform anywhere, you know, like, you know, different places, you know, like in famous um, classical music halls, as well as just performing on stage in front of many people. Like, those are kind of my goals. I know you you were born and raised in Jamaica, obviously with the, sorry in America, obviously yeah. with Jamaican parents, and you are tapping now into the music because we heard just now with the um, Bob Marley and you're looking to reggae music. What are some of the other pieces that you're you're working on or you're looking at? Um, yeah, so like well, I mostly do classical music. So do it classical wise, I've been working on the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto um, and a couple of other as well and you know i'm still like uh we were talking i was talking to my parents yesterday about learning more reggae music as well to play Mm -hmm. so who are your favorite reggae artists um i like um i like this new song by yg marley um Mm -hmm. which is bob marley's Mm -hmm. grandson it's called praise john the moonlight Mm -hmm. so i've been listening to that a lot so i like that one I really like that too. You know, um, it, it's really good to, to, to do what you're doing. I like the fact that you did the, the Bob Marley and we'd like to hear what you do with YG Marley because you're listening to that. Mm-hmm. Any dance hall in, in, in that whole mix? No, no, I haven't, I haven't like played it yet, but I've been listening, so I would. Who are you listening to? <laughs> <laughs> How do you, you don't want to say? Huh? Do you listen to, she's you asking listening about to? dance hall music. Mm-hmm. No, no, <laughs> no, I don't know. Well, that means that you're gonna have to introduce her, Talisio, and we're, we're gonna have to have her <laughs> okay. doing some drift and thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, um, great, brilliant, uh, mm-hmm. in the meantime. Looking forward to reading about you, hearing about you, and probably going into Vienna or one of them places and just sitting down. At, okay, so she's not at the Vienna thing. Which place do you want to perform? Oh, um, well, I've, I've had the privilege of already um, playing in Carnegie Hall um, oh. when I was in the orchestra in the summer. Mm-hmm. But, you know, playing there again would be nice. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, a lot of, uh, like, in across, like, overseas as well. Yes. So looking forward to that. And I'm sure I'll hear. And mm-hmm. we'll try, we'll try to, to be in that audience. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, and, and, and your parents, um, obviously very, very supportive. Anything you want to say about that? Yeah, so, you know, I wouldn't have been where I am or doing the music that I am without them. Um, they definitely helped me. You know, they um, provide for my violin, my instrument, my lessons. Everything that I really do is thanks to them. So I'm very appreciative. Does the violin come with a whole kit where you have to have a whole lot of other stuff? Or just as long as you have your violin, you're good? Well, no. The, I mean, the violin, you need, like, your shoulder rest and your bow and the rosin and everything else and to clean it and maintain it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Right. What, what's your sponsorship like, if any? Um, I don't know if I really have a sponsorship right now, but, you know, 
future. Mm -hmm. Well, how important is, is sponsorship for, for someone like her, uh, Talisa? It would be great for her. It would be great for her to be able to build those types of relationships. Having endorsements is always amazing. You know, it opens doors to, to multiple opportunities for her. Um, I really would want Jamaicans, this, her trip here is an introduction to who Leah is to, mm -hmm. to the Jamaican audience. So mm -hmm. as she comes back, I know she will have a lot more time to meet, greet, mm -hmm. and to do a lot more media runs and to perform so they can really see her. Because you and I know that once mm -hmm. she touches her violin, mm -hmm. they are going to fall in love yes, with her. Yes, yes. Right. And Without when she doubt. speaks, mm -hmm. you're even more going to fall in love yeah. with her. So I have no doubt that when she comes yeah. back, it will be past the introduction state and stage and now going into, hey, we yeah. need to work with her. Well, listen, I'm here for that. This space is available anytime, anywhere. Just let me know. And we'll always be very ready to welcome you to this space. Uh, both of you, thank you so much for coming in. I know, I'd, I wish I could have you do a piece before we go out. I find out you probably prepared about four pieces, right? We only, <laughs> we only played two so far. How uh -huh. many, how many did you prepare in all? Um, three. Well, there you go. Four. You prepared four. <laughs> All right. So, so let's do, let's go with, with, with the other. Tell, tell us about it. What are um, we this is Three Little Birds by Bob Marley. Ah, uh, do I have a soundtrack for that? Or are you going to play that without a soundtrack? Without a? I thought there is, I thought okay. there was one. All right. Shamar, <laughs> let, let me know if there's, well, I, I don't know. Is there? Um, Shamar, let me know. Uh, if there's one and then we'll definitely play that. All right. Let me, let me do this. Let me do this. Wow, wow, brilliant, brilliant. We love, this is so soulful. We're still dancing and looking at her like you're done already. <laughs> um, this is really, really, really good. Thank you so much, uh, Leah. You are beautiful. The music is beautiful. And, uh, wow, what, 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 what a success because I know you're just 16, but, 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 you know, and I'm not a musicologist or anything. I'm, I'm plenty times tone deaf. But, but really, the, the, the kind of maturity with which you play, though, um, is phenomenal. And I'm sure you've been told that before. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's really something. All right. So we look forward to hearing you, seeing you in other places. Safe journeys tomorrow. Thank you. Any, anything you want to say finally before you go? Um, I guess just, you know. Uh, yeah, make sure to follow me on my social media at Leah Flynn Violin, um, where you can see more of my journeys there. Beautiful. Uh, Talisa, you've got like really, you know, when, 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 when the heavens just give you something good to work with. I know. You know, you, 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 you don't have much work to do at all. <laughs> you, just, you just need to introduce her to the space. I know. She's yeah. an inspiration to a yeah. lot, especially yeah. to me. Yeah. 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 Brilliant to me too. I'm sure Shamara, she, <laughs> you know. Uh, wow. What a lovely morning. What a beautiful morning. The music just kind of just washes over you and, and this is really, really great. Uh, beautiful. Thank you so much, my sisters, for coming in this morning and for helping to make the space a better space. Really appreciate that. Let me do this again and go out with this. Uh, from, well, it's a soundtrack, but anyway, since she played on this. All right, so that was Leah Flynn, uh, introduced to the piano at age three. She's been playing violin since she's been five, she's 16 now. And uh, she's a grade 11 student. She wants to be a concert violinist, as you heard before. She's performed across the world with orchestras. And, uh, well, I didn't know you performed at the White House. We didn't say that. So, at nine, you were nine when you performed at the White House. Wow. Okay. Uh, that was, what, what year was that? There you go. Wow. Safe travels. Have, have a good one. 
Uh, so at nine years old, she performed at the White House um, while President Obama was in office. And we're saying that as she's going out. <laughs> Some elections happening around the world, you know, um, this year, this year, I think, for a long time. This is the first year that we're having so many parliamentary um, elections and other legislative elections, presidential elections and so on happening around the world. We have uh, um, on February 25, Belarus, Cambodia. Uh, well, we have local government elections here on the 26th. In Senegal, we have, um, well, presidential elections. That's supposed to happen. That's causing some problems there now because President Macky Sall looked like he's postponing that and that is calling, causing some upheavals in Senegal. So we are watching that. We understand the opposition um, person has been arrested. So much happening in Senegal. It's such a shame, though. Such a shame. Then on March 1, we've got parliamentary elections in Iran. We have local elections in El Salvador on March 3. Then there's, um, we have legislative elections in the Maldives on the 17th. Russia, presidential elections on the 17th. Um, what's the difference between, okay, let me not say it. You see how long my pause, you know, someone wants to say it, don't it? <laughs> but I'm thinking about Julian Assange. Julian Assange. I'm thinking about the journalist Julian Assange. WikiLeaks, who's been languishing, whether it's European, whether it's British or, or, or otherwise, prison for the very longest while, his wife and children are just totally beside themselves, not knowing what to do. He's in prison just for making information available, information that people should know. But it's not reported in the way that Navaldi and, and, and the others are, are reported, is it? You know, um, the media, is on either, do we talk about predictive programming when you talk about the fourth estate you know, um, media literacy is very, very important because if we were to report on Julian Assange in the way that, say, the Western media report on Navaldi or, or, or anyone else who is in prison, whether it's in in Russia or in and uh, and remember, we know that we are hearing that 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 he is he's died, and we're not thinking that anyone should kill anyone. I'm not Tucker Carlson in the thing around you at all. I'm just saying that governments really do. They imprison people. And we see this with Julian Assange. And, and, and they talk about um, freedom of information and freedom of the press and freedom this and freedom that. And they don't like our freedom. Well, if, you, if, if you're if you such uh, a stalwart and if you're such uh, a, a, a supporter of freedom, then it seems to me that you'd free Julian Assange. It seems to me... As if you look again at Mumia Abu Jamal, because you know we have all the world's media, including the U.S. media. Look at the blanket wall-to-wall coverage of Navalny in in Russia yesterday and today and even the day before. But Mumia Abu Jamal was imprisoned only because he was a journalist covering the atrocities of the U.S. government against its own citizens. The U.S. government bombed its own citizens in Philadelphia, the MOVE compound. And uh, this was covered by Mumia, uh, Mumia Abu-Jamal. And uh, what happened? Anyway, we'll come back to that. Dwight is on standby from the Sajikor Sigma run happening in New Kingston. Dwight. <sighs> <laughs> He's sure, obviously, in the running. I just no, no, well, I no, know he didn't run. You, you see, that you know. Mm. You see, that you know. Mm. Hey, the entire Jamaican, the entire world, at least, walk out. Right. Ka, I mean, this program, I, you know, when I study man, is a serious program. Exactly, and we know you didn't run. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. 
What you should have done if you wanted me to cover for you. Yes. You should have, you know, whispered it to Shamar. Should I give me a little note and and you'll run for me? I would have, yeah, I would have had a cover for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> but going forward, then I'm going to think about that. Yes, please, please do, please do. <laughs> Thanks so much, Kabu. Yes. We're with the Olympian Russell Clayton. Of course, the World Championship uh, bronze medalist over the four hurdles in 2019, and of course, a bronze medalist at Budapest, Hungary last year. Russell Clayton. How you do? Welcome to Ira Fem. I'm doing good. Yeah? It, 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 it's a really great atmosphere out here. Oh, wonderful. People like Dirty Man. <laughs> Lord of mercy. Love you, you, love you. Hey, you couldn't take a guess, Russia. Like you just say, take a guess as to how many persons participated and are, are, and are volunteering in the park this morning here at Emancipation Park. Well, the people who were participating yes. was over 200,000 plus the volunteers. Wow. Maybe about three, 400,000 people in this area right now. I was saying to Errol just now that it took me at least 15 minutes before I could move off from the spot. Oh, yes. When the sound of the gun. Yes. And I'm not lying. Yes. You saw the crowd. I saw yeah. that. All right. I saw that. Russell Clayton, here we are with the 2024 Sajikor Sigma Honor Run. And this year they're honoring R. Danny Williams, the former chairman. How special is this for you as an Olympian, a national representative, to be part of today's activities? It is very special. Um, Sajikor has been around, this Sigma run has been around for 26 years. Yes. And, to be, and it's for a special cause. They're always giving back to institutions. And to be a part of giving back, it just feels amazing. Wonderful. Um, yourself and Andre Blake. Of course, uh, the two patrons of the meet this year. When Sajiko approached you in being a patron, what was your first response? <laughs> I actually got a text saying, hey, Rochelle. And I was like, hey. And it says, Sigma Run. I was like, yes, definitely. I'm yeah. doing that. I've always wanted to do so that. So you never reconsider. I never and guess. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. For you, though, the Sigma Run, of course, um, just when I spoke to Andre Blake some weeks ago, the captain of uh, Jamaica's national football team, the Reggae Boys, and he was saying that, of course, this aligns with things uh, that athletes do in giving back. Mm -hmm. You you subscribe to that? Yes, definitely. I, I have given back in so many small ways. It may not be major giving back that the world knows about, yes. but the individuals who have helped, they know themselves and they, they have moved forward with the little that I have done for them. Of course, our surgical representatives on the ground will help us later on. We're aiming for 100 million. Oh, yeah, it has surpassed 100, 109 oh, million. Hey, my surgical <laughs> people, I'm quick, you know. Hey, yes. hey, have a train for this race. <laughs> 109,000 and... Yeah, 109 million, million yes. sorry. And 54,616. My gosh. Mm -hmm. So we surpassed the target. We did. We sure did. Looking at it today, though, how happy are you to have been part of the day's activities? I told them I am super, super happy. And if they call on me tomorrow, I'll definitely do it again. Just how it felt to stand on that stage and seeing so many people yes. doing this for a great cause. Right now, I'm getting goosebumps. Wonderful. <laughs> it's, it, it's so amazing. We're getting set to throw it back to studio. But thanks so much again, Rochelle, for participating in today's activities. How your preparation coming on for awesome. the Olympics and for awesome. the season? I'm loving, I'm loving the progress. Okay. Good, yeah. What are some of the things that you're working on? Um, speed, hurdling faster, hurdle technique, and stride patterns. Okay. Yeah. Any worries this year um, of perhaps any competitor who you have set your target to say, well, those are my two nemesis. I must beat those persons. No. It's a 10 obstacle race and anything can happen. So if, I've, if I'm in a race, it's seven competitors and myself. Thanks again. No Russell problem. Clayton, Olympian. Thanks again. Okay. All right. So that's the Olympian, Russell Clayton. We'll throw it back to Studio now with Kabu Mahat Karu and we'll look later on on the result to see where uh, Kabu would finish in the event. <laughs> but all I know, she don't beat me no error. They know that. I saw a dog on the road. She got a little poodle. With him number strap around him. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, even, oh, right time in the stream again. Even the dogs are coming in before. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. It's finished behind me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look here. We, 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 we got to cash back, but when you come back at approximately nine o'clock uh, thereabout, yes, I'll give you the official. Looking uh, forward. Yes. Looking forward. All right, so listen up, top draw dollars, pick two, pick three, pick four, hot pick and cash pot uh, early bird draws. Coming up in just a minute, you're inside of the Africa Forum. This is Running African. So that was Dwight Fraser and the area from outside broadcast crew on location at the Sajiko Sigma Run happening in New Kingston. We're going to be joining with him again 
at around nine, just after nine o'clock. What a lot of money. That's good though. We like um, when it happens like that. And wow, we hear about the crowds there too. Mm, that's quite something. We love that. We love that, that kind of support that the Sajiko Sigma one is getting today. Katie and Hardy. So we're expected to have Kadian now in the space. So Kadian, if you're hearing me, because I'm expecting you in studio, but I'm not seeing you, but I know you did a brilliant job last night on the debates. I know you did a really great job. And um, if there was a winner out of the debates last night, then it would be you. So congratulations on what you did and how you represented. You did very well. And I'm saying this objectively. So, um, so we're expecting Katie on in the space. Uh, she's not here right now and we're not hearing from you, Katie, but we do understand that last night must have been quite something for you. And I wouldn't, did, um, blame you if you go, or go, go celebrate afterwards. But, um, <laughs> outside of that, let us know, let us know what's happening with you because you're scheduled to be in studio right now as we look and go into the local government elections and then, at nine o'clock, my my brother and friend, uh, Michael Bell Navis, who is councillor caretaker candidate for the Otrius um, division, representing the Jamaica Labour Party. He's a businessman. He's a former mayor of St. Anne. He will join me live in studio. You know, when it comes to politics and partisan politics and so on, there is, it is such a shame that we've carried it to the place we have carried it here in Jamaica. Um, because I'm going to be joined in this. I hope today would have been a day when I'd be joined in the studio by two very good friends, two people I like very much, two people I get along with very, very well over the years without knowing their politics and caring about their politics. Katie and Harty and Michael Bell Neighbors. Katie and his PNP, Michael is JLP, don't matter one hoots to me. Uh, but we hope to have, uh, Michael in the studio, uh, JLP representative for councillor. Uh, in a little while, that's one about nine o'clock. So, um, Kadian, let us know what's happening with you because we're not seeing you. In the meantime, I was telling you about the local government, the list, sorry, the list of countries that have, that's having elections this year. And I think we got to Russia and kind of got thrown off with other stuff. But anyway, Slovakia is having presidential election on March 23. The Solomon Islands will be having their general elections on April 17. Ecuador having a, their a referendum on April 21. North Macedonia having a presidential election on April 24. Panama um, also having a general election North Mas- uh, uh, May 5. The Dominican Republic having a presidential election on May is it 19? South Africa having their presidential election in May also. Mexico having their general election June 2. Uh, Mauritania having a presidential election on June 22. Mongolia, their legislative elections on June 28. Rwanda having a presidential parliamentary elections on July 15. Croatia, their legislative elections on July 22. Mozambique on uh, presidential on October 9. You are going having a general election on October 24. Chad, legislative on October, tw- October also. Namibia, legislative in November. Guinea-Bissau, presidential in November. Romania, presidential in November. Ghana, general in December, December 7. Croatia, presidential December also. And South Sudan, presidential December also. You see, I like it when Shamara is here, you know, because I'm talking. And I just smell the coffee back at me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shamara. Mm, wow. Good morning. If you've had your coffee already, good morning to you, Andrea. See that you had yours very, very early. Well, I just got mine because Shamara is in the studio. And so when she's here, my coffee comes round about this time. And so my coffee is smelling like really good. You know, so it's Blue Mountain Coffee. You know, if I ask nobody, this is like Blue Mountain Coffee just wafting round the place and just, mm, mm. <laughs> this is a black coffee, good for black people. Coffee comes from Ethiopia. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's what it is. Talking about Ethiopia. Ethiopia has been challenging. Well, Ethiopia has... Let me say this without apology. Ethiopia has no recourse, no option but to go through Somaliland. Ethiopia has no option but to acknowledge 
Somaliland as a country. Somaliland is not part of, South, of Somalia. Let's get that right. All right. This is how they divided up themselves from time to time. I mean, originally we can go back to say the whole land is so and so. But in terms of how the borders have, have been drawn over time, Somalia cannot now claim Somaliland. Ethiopia is doing what Ethiopia has to do, which is to make an agreement with Somaliland to recognize Somaliland as a country because nobody in the Africa Union recognizes Somaliland as a country. Nobody in the world recognizes Somaliland as a country, but Somaliland has its own administrative political setup, which is not part of Ethiopia, not part of Eritrea, not part of Somalia, but their own independent setup. They're just not recognized. And this is all political. So Ethiopia, I am 100% with Ethiopia. They have no option but to recognize Somaliland as a country, regardless of what you're hearing in the Western media, and then to, to, to make an agreement with Somaliland to have access to the sea through Somaliland to X out and cut out Eritrea and anybody else who want to, to, to make Ethiopia, uh, um, to turn Ethiopia, to enslave Ethiopians, economic slavery. So that I agree with Ethiopia. Uh, identi- well, let me take a break and come back. Let me take a break. It's safe for six week. The time by the Minister of Health and Wellness is... 8.46, 8.46. You're inside of the Africa Forum. This is Running African. So here's the thing. What am I on about? So um, Ethiopia has recently, as the Africa Union Summit is underway in Addis Ababa right now, it is a shame to see so many Africa, African leaders in one place and they are not able to make their own decisions. They are engaged and involved in all kinds of bilateral agreements and slavery, economic slavery agreements with the Bretton Woods institutions. I see Ivory Coast now with all of them, um, the, the biggest producer of cocoa in the world, gone back to the IMF. This is what's happening with the Ivory Coast now. We see Israel is, still has observer status at, at the Africa Union. We see the, these, these puppets, so many of them are puppets inside there the, at the Africa Union. We call it as we see it. We don't really have no time for fool around. And Ethiopia trying to survive. Now, Somaliland, uh, Somalia has gone to the Africa Union complaining. Why? Because Ethiopia is about to recognize Somaliland as a nation, as a country. And in that way, the African Union will then have to recognize Somaliland, obviously a process, and then also the, the, um, the United Nations and so on. Okay. Ethiopia has been forced to do this. Because as you know, the West-led coup uh, and... Um, uh, siphoning off of Eritrea from Ethiopia. All of that was one country. Siphoned off that. Uh, Ethiopia came out and agreed. At the end of the day, Ethiopia was forced to accept Eritrea as a nation. Now, Eritrea as a nation, as it is, has been too hostile to Ethiopia over time. Ethiopia has now become landlocked. This is a problem because you have Eritrea on that side and you have Somalia on that side and you have Somaliland over the other side. So in effect, Ethiopia, which is um, experiencing now a renaissance, Ethiopia is um, developing and, uh, and has reached a level with the help of China, um, that Ethiopia is now about to spread its wings in ways that we can't even begin to imagine. And I think it's brilliant what's happening with Ethiopia. But Ethiopia has no access to serious trade so that they can participate in global, in the, in global Africa and in the global economy in the way that a nation that is reaching Ethiopia's level should participate. That's a problem, you know. So Ethiopia has decided that, well, let's just look at our options. So Eritrea is charging us an arm and a leg. To, 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 to trade, to go through them country for reach the sea. Somalia is doing the same thing because they think they can't hold this over our head. It's not even, it's not, it doesn't even make sense to go through Somalia because of the piracy and all of that. And, but Somaliland is right here and nobody recognizes it, although it is functioning as a country, uh, with no, with, with not controlled by Somalia or by Ethiopia. I agree. I agree. Now, this is a problem. This is why the U.S., this is another reason for the United States and all of them to come down on the head of uh, Ethiopia. They are trying very hard to get out the current um, prime minister of Ethiopia and the current president of Ethiopia. Prime minister, yeah. They're trying very hard to do that 
Because here is somebody who is thinking as a global Pan-African, also um, thinking lo- locally and acting globally. You understand? And so they don't want that. They don't like that. Because look at the region again. Look at the region. We're talking about the Horn of Africa. Take out your maps, please. Google Ethiopia, Yemen, Ethiopia and Yemen on the map. Ethiopia and the Red Sea on the map. Ethiopia and Djibouti on the map. It is the same region, you know. This region has become, you know, when, what a song did it say again? Um, some another shall be the battlefield. Oh, the two sevens clash. Anyway, so Ethiopia is, that whole region is really that region of tension. This is where the global geopolitical tension is really happening right now. Did you hear, uh, Kamala Harris? She's in Munich. I don't know if she's still there, but she was in Munich on the weekend. She made two speeches. The first speech, the one where she's dressed in all black. Listen to that speech closely again. Go back and listen to everything she said. Listen closely. Don't miss one word. If if anything, Google the script for it and see if she, whether deliberately or not, if she's not preparing the world, this is now ge- global geopolitics in a way that we've never seen it before in recent times, where she almost if not announced World War Three, listen to that speech. They made it come through her, because she never write it, so they made that come through her mouth, the black woman. She's the one who took that to the global stage and literally told us what America was about to do and what America is doing and how they plan to do it. And without apology, listen to that speech again. Unless America is just going around joking That's one of the most serious speeches that we've heard in a long time from a vice president, because forget that is Kamala, from a vice president of the United States of America. So I'm not seeing Katie. (laughs) Katie, Katie Harty, where are you, my sister? All right, but... um, Yes, yeah, so my sister is asking me if this is Yosundor. Yes, this is Yosundor. Yosundor, my sister. Also, Arlene, how are you doing? And I'm hearing from, all right. Uh, oh, thank you so much, Aldith. Cause Aldith, Aldith says, flight of the bumblebee is not Paganini, but Rimsky Korsak, Korsakov. Rimsky, Rimsky Sok, uh, Korsakov. And uh, she put a little, um, musical note there to show me that she knows exactly what she's talking about. So thank you so much, uh, for that. All this, my sister friend. Some other things we have to deal with. Let me, let me tell you quickly, um, that I wanted to bring to your attention. So you might have heard by now that the UK and Japan are in recession. Remember when countries like the UK get into recession, the first thing they do is start a war. And so we have to watch closely what the UK is up to. So the UK and Japan have both announced that they are in recession. There is a scaremongering tactic going on now where they're saying that Russia is putting nuclear, nuclear weapons in space. And they are determining what or not it, what, what, what is Putin going to do. I don't know if you heard that Iran, Iran has declared that Antarctica is its property. That story. <laughs> Antarctica is, a, is an interesting place. Lots of discussions about Antarctica, you know. Lots of discussion. And the, all of them are just really phenomenal. There's one conspiracy theory that I'm hearing about Antarctica and it really, <laughs> You know, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but the one about the ice wall. Have you heard the one about the ice wall? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Now, here's something that um, I'm finding very interesting. There's an oil spill in Trinidad and Tobago, in Tobago, off the coast of Tobago, actually. And uh, it's, it's, it's really controversial because... We have an, a ship carrying tons and tons of oil turning over, overturning in the ocean, in the Caribbean Sea. And uh, 
there's a there's a terrible oil spill. It's not being reported on in no serious way, but I I hear that it could possibly become a tier three, which means that it would be very very serious. It's now tier two, but heading to tier three, and um, there. There were questions about who the ship belonged to. Um, somebody said the ship had a writing on it called Gulf Stream. We saw a press conference that a politician in, in Trinidad gave saying that he got a WhatsApp message that the ship belonged to someone who was about to acquire, um, some, some oil mining company or something to that effect. And so it is going around and around, but it's getting worse. We understand this, the spill, um, uh, it was first spotted by Trinidad and Tobago's Coast Guard. And, um, right, I said before that they, there was a capsized barge. That barge remains unplugged. And uh, the spill has spread miles from Tobago's shore. And Tobago's, this is where, you know, the, it's the epicenter. But Trinidad, we understand, has alerted Venezuela and Grenada of a possible uh, contact, uh, sorry, um, impact of the oil spill on their own coastline. We understand that it's spreading in the Caribbean waters. So not quite sure. We understand that the Caribbean Disaster Management Agency, which is uh, um, dependent on regional group CARICOM, has activated a contingency plan. And uh, this was said on Friday. So a barge, we understand, pulled by a tugboat caused the spill. But details of the incident remaining unclear, including the type of petroleum leaking, the ship's ended, intended, uh, intended destination, the owner. Well, we're hearing some things about the owner now. And if any members of the crew were lost, because we, we're not hearing about the crew, we don't know if people are still on the ship. It's overturned. And um, we understand that by Friday gone, the slick had reached about 144 kilometers. That's 89 miles into the Caribbean Sea and was moving at a rate of nine miles per hour. Uh, the Edwin Ramkinson, who um, is a fish, makes a living fishing there, said, this looks like it will continue for a few weeks. I cannot simply sit down and do nothing. I need help cleaning my boat before moving to another port on the Caribbean side. The barge is believed to have carried as much as 35,000 barrels of fuel oil. And this is according to Tobago officials. But what we're seeing now is that the beaches, the island's beaches have been blackened and the wildlife is being affected. Tourism is also affected. Several beach and golf resorts in Tobago that typically receive foreign tourists have been forced to close across the ocean. And the nearby Scarborough cruise ship port is being protected from the spill by containment booms. So... This is not looking so good, not sounding so good. Trinidad, they say, is considering declaring a Tier 3 emergency. That would allow it to obtain foreign assistance to deal with the spill. This is according to Prime Minister Keith Rowley. He gave a press conference on Friday. Uh, first responders and volunteers in Tobago have so far collected, uh, that's at Friday, 2,000 barrels of oil. But the islands is short of protective team equipment, volunteers and, and crews. This is according to TEMA. So there's a whole lot going on here, you know, because we don't hear no big, you know, we don't see a lot on the news. We don't hear a lot on even our local news. But this is happening and it seems to be pretty serious happening right here in the in the Caribbean. But the thing that bothers me and boggles the mind is FUFA ship, why the ship, what, where was it going, who, what kind of, what kind of situation was this? What kind of situation? Um, who were involved in this? All right, we're back with you inside of the Africa Forum. This is uh, Running African, and I'm joined in studio by my brethren, my good friend. <laughs> 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 you know, I, you know, I've known this man for such a long time, long and time. I've always endorsed him. You know, this is a very funny thing because it have nothing to do with party. So, Michael Bell Bel- Nevis is in the studio, councillor, caretaker, candidate for the Otrius Division, businessman, former mayor of St Anne's Bay. How are you doing, Mr. Michael Bell Nevis? Well, my friend Kabul, we've been here for so long. As, you know, yeah. our firm is just a, is just our our own right here in Otrius. Yes. So, you know. I tell people, you know, this is something I say in this piece all the time. That, and if every constituency could have been like 
when Shahini did her own old yes. shape. I'm saying this, you know, it, it, with, almost carelessly, but it is true, you know, because there was no hint of um, tribalism. We understood who was who, but there was no hint of tribalism. Never. And then there was this other thing where, where she always pointed, and I said to you one time, long time, she always pointed me to you. Um, if she couldn't come, say, talk to Michael. If she couldn't do that, she said, talk to Michael. And, and here you are. And then we, over the, over time, we became pretty close as a result of that. Absolutely. I said to you one time, I saw you at the IRF, um, event here. The last uh-huh. time I saw you here. I'm always here. And I said to you, why are you not running? Right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you told me that you were that this was in in in, in the works. Yes, um, I'm I'm happy that you that you got in the race. Uh, who is the your G, your PNP counterpart? Um, her name is Natalie. Um, uh, a young lady from the um, uh, from the town. I, I I don't know too much about her. Okay. Yeah. I know you're not coming to push Natalie, but hey, <laughs> I mean, this is how this is how we flex anyway, no not yes. Um, in Southeast Saint Anne. Yes. Um, so, so you're a former mayor, uh-huh. and uh, um, to be a mayor, obviously, you go through the route of being of, of being a councillor first, and then yeah. your colleagues. Right. You know, you're, you're not elected to be mayor; no. you're mm-hmm. chosen. The system needs to change that. I believe right. that you're, you're not accountable. So councillors, you should be accountable to the people. Right. So if the councillors choose you to be their a colleague mayor, then there's some accountability to the councillors. I feel that that system, uh, uh, to me, is, it, it, it should be a very accountable to the people. Mm-hmm. So the mayor should be, just like in Portmore, should be a representative of the parish, mm-hmm. and the entire parish should vote for the mayor. Mm-hmm. That is my personal perspective yeah. on it. Um, you, you've been an active person um, in in Otrias, in Saint Anne, in the southeast Saint Anne, for a very, very long time. Mm-hmm. What makes you so committed to the to the region? Gosh, I, I started off as the third youngest candidate in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. I, um, the most honourable Andrew Hollis. Now we started out with the G, in the G two K, which is a, a, what was the predecessor predecessor to the G two K for the Young Leaders Council, mm-hmm. and um, from nineteen ninety five. Mm. And, uh, 95. 1995. Yeah. yeah, I started on the business in 1992. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, I remember you from the business days, because right. IRFM is 1990. Right. And you were in business in Ochi in, 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 in the early days. So in the early you days. remember that, yeah. Right. So I started mm-hmm. the business young. I started out as a politician young. Mm-hmm. And I just had a commitment to both. And I always wanted to, you know, kind of create that balance. And I figured that I could do it. If, you know, if I really focus, because I've always had a lot of things. I mean, I was head boy at Color Bar back in the day. Mm-hmm. I was an elected senator at the University of Miami. So I, I worked full time and I went to school full time. Mm-hmm. So I, oh, I was always busy. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I always thought that, you know, I could, I could manage both. And I've, 30 years later, I've been able to manage both. I'm, I'm, I'm a kind of jack of all trades type of guy. I'm master of none. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've always said that though. That is something you always say. Yeah. Um, so, so listen, um, and, and I said, what makes you so committed to the region? Because mm-hmm. it is, it is, it is true. And for us working here at IRFM and having to deal with, um, the private sector, but also having to deal with the, with the politics of, of, of the day, one of the things we know is that you always make yourself available. Not only that, you always support, um, community initiatives and so on. And this is one of the things that I wanted to know. It, regardless of which party is in power, mm-hmm. you're always there to say, can we do this in Ochi? How do we do this in Ochi? How do we do this in Southeast St. Anna? And this is what I want to find out from you. That level of committed to, commitment to the region. Um, for, for me, it looks to me like it goes beyond party for you. Absolutely. You know, uh, Cabo, I've been uh, in this home for so long. It's a town that I, I live in. It's a town that I make my living from. Uh, I'm committed to the town. I, I believe that uh, the vision that I have is kind of unique because of my, you know, foreign experience, going to school abroad and so on. I'm coming back here and, you know, really doing some unique things in business. Uh, a lot of the business that I do or, you know, it, it has to do with innovation. With, we, we, you know, we, were, we, were, we were the first, one of the first six Western Union agents in Jamaica. You know, when we started Western Union, there were yes. six locations. Mm-hmm. We started wholesale shopping. Which never exists back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, three, three, buy three, get a discount, that type of thing. I remember uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> we brought, we, we brought yes. in containers of, of leg quarters into Jamaica mm. for people in Ocho, for poor people could have chicken. People, yeah, the, yeah. back in the day, people used to eat pure chicken back. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so we kind of elevated the standards in business. 
and then um, we brought we were with Digicel and so on. Mm-hmm. The, anyway, first came an innovative thing. Yes, again. yes. So um, I wanted to carry some of that uh, vision into the politics yes. um, of the re- of the region, and uh, you know, and I said, you know, let me try and make Ochiras the place to live, work, and, and grow family, and you know, really be, help build the place. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we did a lot of things to really create the, the, that type of vibe in the, in, in another one the place. And people always come to me, whether it be the health department, whether it be, um, the churches, whether it be community groups, whether it be people just looking support mm-hmm. to say, how is it that we can partner some sort of relationship mm-hmm. and do things and, and move forward? So we went ahead and redeveloped the Boxfield Wall Ground. We put mm-hmm. in an amphitheater. Mm-hmm. We went ahead and put in lights. We put in, um, you know, uh, we got, we got, um, Public partner, public private partnership with Sandals, who gave us ten million dollars to do the netball courts and the basketball courts, and we've been able to always get public private partnerships to do a lot of things in and around the area. The, a lot of the signs you see around are public private partnerships. When other areas would have to get government funding to do science and so on, we were able to get the private sector. How do you balance? Involved. How do you balance um, the public-private partnership? Because we know that it's a trap for a lot of politicians and a, and, and a trap for governments. In that private sector becomes so ingrained and involved in politics that you um, you find yourself making a choice in many cases between um, how you see to the to the to the to the needs of the private sector at the expense of the people. How do you balance that? You know, because everybody kind of knows me because I've been in business for so long mm-hmm. and I deal with all the top companies in Jamaica. So it, uh, I can easily call the CEO of any, any one of these companies and say, you know, can you assist me with this project for the people? A, a case in point, every year we have, and you guys are there too, we have the fireworks right there yes, on Ultras yes, Bay Beach. We've been doing it yeah. for eight years now. Yes. We started the fireworks there and, um, and we get support from a lot of major companies to do that. It doesn't cost government anything. Mm-hmm. And what we're able to do is to do the public private partnership to make it, to make it yeah, happen. Yeah, but I understand that side of it, you know, the side I'm asking about is when private sector, uh, when private sector has invested so much in, in, in the politics then, mm-hmm. uh, or with politicians, uh, because politicians ask, um, what happens to the needs of the people? If the needs of the people are Somehow different from the needs of a politician. Take, let us take the access to the beaches, for example. Mm-hmm. That public private partnerships say with the hotel industry. That is, and the hotel industry might be in inclusive, all inclusive hotels. Right. And, and so the, 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 the people then are denied access to the beach. How do you, uh, on what foot do you have to stand upon to say to the, 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 the private sector who have helped you so much, um, to say, listen, we have to deal with the needs of the people. Well, I, I, you know, I, I, I tend to agree with you in that, in that respect where you know, beach access in Jamaica is is somewhat restricted. I've always said, gosh, I, you know, you, you know, there's so much issues associated with that. But um, there are a lot of beaches around that are somewhat public in the sense that there's little Duns River and there's um, free flavors coming all <laughs> Michael, the way don't do it, you know, because you know, so me and you got quiet about that, you know. <laughs> so little Duns River is only open on Sundays and it did lock down for a very, very long time. Yes, yes. And it's only open on Sundays right now, so uh-huh. don't don't call it. No, 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 no this, I'm, I'm, yeah. this is where I'm going with mm-hmm. that. Little Duns River, um, as far as I'm concerned, is for the people. I know that at one point UDC wanted to sell it and so on. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I, I was uh, Shaheen and I actually it was Shaheen I don't yes. want to take credit for that yes. was the one who blocked that yes. but I've been able to work along with her mm-hmm. to ensure that we, we do something there no Little Duns River is in a state of flux because there's no sanitation it's just there it's just a, a, a beach in this raw sense. Michael, why did we wait so long? Because we've been here before, even when Shahini was helping us mm-hmm. to fight for Little Duns River. Remember, the, the problem was always what it is. Yeah. So, so what people used to say and what the UDC used to say, no sanitation, no security. But you know how many years that, that is? We're looking uh, forever. at forever. 15, 20, for, forever. 20 years. It's a, yeah. So, so it's, why, it's a, it's, why is it that we're saying the same thing today? All right. Um, I can tell you, as part of my campaign, and you know, it's never too late for a shower rain. Mm-hmm. Little Duns River will be developed in this, in this new dispensation. Mm-hmm. I put it as part of my campaign, um, 
mantra up. Because mm-hmm. I remember, you know, mm-hmm. I've only been doing OTRS for one term. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's not, I mean, I've been around a long time in OTRS, but mm-hmm. not in the political sphere. Mm-hmm. So with, with only one term behind my belt, yeah. I've decided that Little Duns River needs to be developed. So mm-hmm. it will have its concessionaires. It will have uh, proper sanitation. Mm-hmm. It will have to be dredged so mm-hmm. it can ha- you know, be a nice beach. Mm-hmm. Parking put in place. Mm-hmm. All the necessary amenities to make it happen. Mm-hmm. And I want to do it in a public-private sphere also. So mm-hmm. at least we can, you know, make sure so, it works. So, so and, does that mean that, much. in in short order, we'll see Little Dunsiver being open, moving from the one yes, day the Sunday one day to, uh, to yeah. other days, and and on, and remains open to the public. Don't turn a big Dunsiver back. The reason why Little Dunsiver is a popular car, we can't pay. If we're going to a big Dunsiver, you know. <laughs> It's simple. We cannot afford it. I can't afford it. Yeah, we can't afford yeah. it. Well, no, we can't afford it. You know, we cannot it, afford it. it. And I keep eh? telling, but you know, they wanted to raise the price so, so many times, and I've always said, yes, it might be only five hundred dollars. But guess what? If it's five hundred dollars for you, your wife, two children, and if, if you bring a little cousin and niece along with you, it can be an expensive property, and, and then you have to buy food. Michael, we cannot afford it. Right. So you can't. It's afford simple. It. We cannot. Yeah. I cannot afford it. Yeah. And I know that most Jamaicans cannot afford it. Mm-hmm. So we don't go to Big Duns River. We go to Little Duns River because Big Duns, Duns River are tourist business. We yeah. can't, no matter the local price, we cannot afford it because that means you have to go, go alone. Right. <laughs> right. So to, you, it to don't make any to, sense. So, so, so that is as it is. Right. Um, so I hear you in the space saying this is part of your ma- mandate to, to develop Little Duns River. And I hear you talking about how it is going to be done. You, I suppose you're working with the, the with, UDC. The, with the with the U, with yeah. the UDC. Mm, well, this is what you, are you working say. with the people? No, I'm not. Well, the UDC owns the property. Uh, Isn't the UDC I'm, government? UDC is a quasi government agency. What quasi mean? It means that uh, they are ultimately owned by the government. Which is, they put a board in place and it's run by a, a board essentially. Um, so it's not, a, it's not a government um, because the board is in place. Well, yeah, it's uh, yeah. You have various agencies. That um, that work within the the, the the governmental system, like you have um, bauxite mining, you have, I understand it, you know. you have petroleum I understand corporation of Jamaica, but but things of that nature. Like you have um, Naranda and them. Naranda, yeah, well, but, but Naranda is a different situation. It's fifty one percent shares it, government right. having a Naranda. Right. So we're going to move on from from Little Dunsiver because I know. All right, so I take you at your word. Mm-hmm. Put this, yeah, my, let, let me let me put this, this. It will it will happen. Kabo. Yeah, I'll hold you to it. Yes, well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold you, you know. <laughs> well, you know I'll hold you to yes, it. Yes, I know. So, um, right. So, 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 uh, I was talking about the public private partnership and how that, um, affects or impacts your ability to really work for the people because the private sector always wants something else, you mm-hmm. know, and it do, it's not always in line with the people. Are you very consciously aware of that? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't get too many, uh, requests from, from the private sector. Okay. They're, they're pretty much, uh, doing their own thing, and mm. when they support me, they support me unconditionally. Yeah. Uh, when Sandals give us the, the support on the, the things as through the fan, Sandy, yeah, through the Sandals Foundation, mm. and they haven't even come back to me to say, well, you know, anything at all. Even when, right. even when they were doing the hotel mm. out by um, by Mami Bay. Michael, they Michael even mentioned that hotel out of, out of Mami Bay. That's they the, make you mention that because. The, the people were driven off the beach. Mm-hmm. The people were driven off the beach, Michael. Uh, Sandals Beach. The no, beach in were, Mami Bay. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, I got The beach you. in Mami Bay. Yeah, I got the you. The fishermen were driven off the beach. Yeah, no, they weren't driven off. They were, they they were, were compensated from what I gather. Compensated? Yeah, they, they, and, but, and but a compensation it, that they accepted um, from the Sandals folks from what I gather. Because uh, they were, yeah, but they were, I don't, I don't but, know but, the exact number. But, 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 were... but after they demonstrated for, for so long, even in COVID, they were demonstrating. They were fired up on, you know. Remember, these are the fishermen who, mm-hmm. the police fire gunshot off, you know. Yeah, it was a... Uh, because they were, they were demonstrating to hold the, the hold them beach. Right, right. And, and it's unfortunate that they had to demonstrate just to get what is there, that is right for the dares because, you know, if you're there on a piece of land, for a piece of, uh, for, for quite some time, then, you know, you should be compensated for relocation. And I've always believed in but that. But suppose you don't want to relocate? Well, um, you know, for the, for the good of the community, for the good of the, sometimes, you know, if the, if the road needs to be widened. All know. right. So very good point you're making. So, so let me ask you this because you are now in a, in a constituency mm-hmm. where 
um, people, access has been taken away from people. Yes. So um, are you open to raising this issue and to ensuring that this is an issue that the government deal with um, at the level at which you are functioning to look at access to beaches? Because with, with our, in other words, like they're doing Cuba or like yeah. they're doing Barbados. Mm-hmm. So the two things can, 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 can exist be, at the same time. Yeah, you know? there can be the synergies. Um, you know, the, the law says that up to the high water mark and so on. And when you go to some of the hotels, you do see folks walking in the water. Uh, but most of them are selling something. Well, if I mean, not me, yeah. I don't tell the people, I'm saying, <laughs> if we want to, local, we have to go to the we come in from boat. We are coming from boat, you know, and stay right at the high water mark. Right. Because that's all right. But I think we don't have to do that. I think that people like you, who have been in the system for so long, who have been fighting beside Shahini mm-hmm. for so long. This is something Shahini fight for now, I'm telling you. Actually, for you know, she's been she she sitting right with what you sit down. Yeah. Many, yeah. many, many, many Sundays. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about these very same issues. Mm-hmm. This is one of the things that I really liked with her. And I I hope that that kind of um, advocacy that came from her as a politician, that we see it in, in whether PNP, RJLP, anybody who's going to be um, a political, at the political helm of this, of Southeast um, St. Anne. Another thing um, that, that, that we want to uh, look it's at. It's actually Northeast St. Anne. Sorry, Northeast St. Uh-huh. Anne. Thank you so much. I miss it so, so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, what, so what are some of the other major things that you're looking at on your own um, manif- on your manifesto? Yes, well, you know, in addition to that, we're really happy with the drop-in centre that we, we we built out. And that is now complete, so it's not on the manifesto anymore, but I thought it what sticks out in center? my mind. The one we did in Boxfield where for the homeless, oh, okay. uh, yeah, the, for the homeless and this and this, you know, disenfranchised. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and you know, there's a story to that, you know, it's a really, it's a really, for people who are really religious, um, and, and I am too, we, that, that, that was not going to happen. And Pastor Franklin, um, I went to him and he said that this location is a location that they had prayed for one year earlier to have it. Wow. And we, we, I, I, independently went to that location and said, this is where we're going to have it. Mm-hmm. And um, I thought it was, it was so spiritual. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, it, no, no, yeah. no, they have a, an area. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know. Um, and now they have an area now where they can sleep overnight and so on. Uh, so they can get their, yeah. their food, three meals a day, clothes, medication. That's very good, um, you know, because that was yeah. really getting out of hand. Yeah, it was. Yeah, so, so that's very good. So how are you managing that process? Because we have, there's a whole facility in place now. It's, that's security. Mm-hmm. It's in the community. So, you know, um, that there has to be security. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, there, there's, there's, there's a, it's staffed. So they cook, mm-hmm. there's a kitchen there. They cook mm-hmm. every day. And, it, and I might think it's chicken back and so on, too, you know, mm-hmm. it's good. I mean, sometimes if I'm well, passing no, no, through, they chicken, call no, me. No, 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 but I'm telling you, it's a good quality, quality okay. institution. It's not turkey neck business. No, no, no not yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, they get good support uh, from the community and mm-hmm. from government because there's a, mm-hmm. there's a there's a budget specifically for that. You should pass through there one day. You'll be I'm very mo- impressed. I'm most, I, I most certainly will. Yeah. Um, what about... Um, uh, Jobs though, and 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 because uh, I know I, I see a lot of construction. Uh, we see people getting these temporary jobs. We see also um, the, um, the the service industry thing kind, kind of ballooning out, out of hand. But what yes. about more more tangible, um, higher paying jobs? You know, um, I have a big issue with that, and that um, Ultras, when, when I was in the supermarket business, um, I used to sell more chicken back in Ultras than Brownstone. And I said, how is that possible? Mm. Yeah, how is that possible? And what I realized is that the, the demographics of this side of the world is, is such because, uh, there is a lot of, uh, un, people, unregulated, um, you know, people live on un- unregulated areas. Mm. And because of that, they're, they're not necessarily trained and skilled. It has mushroomed over the years. So, uh, the, it, although on the surface, Ochoas looks affluent and, you know, it looks like a lot of money running through here. And it's a lot of money running through because of the tourism product. Yeah. But it's not but equitable. There's a lot of poverty. Yeah, it's not equitably yeah. distributed. Yeah. Um, and it, that needs to be addressed. So we're looking at skills training, you're looking at just, uh, upliftment mm-hmm. of people, just people just feeling, you know, mentorship. Mm-hmm. People must feel empowered. Mm-hmm. They don't feel like, feel, feel that they're worth something. Mm-hmm. Cause a lot of people out there just don't feel they're worth anything and people get treated as such. Mm-hmm. So a lot of them work in the, in, in all inclusives and so on. Mm-hmm. And then the business plan of the all inclusives and so on are such that, 
because the salaries are so low, they can have four to have these all inclusive because you can't have all inclusive in Miami because mm. you know you have to pay people more. Mm. So that 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 business plan is not there. Mm. But here in Jamaica, um, you know it 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 works and it works well because they're making most of these all inclusive are making more money out of Jamaica than anywhere else in the, any other location. Right, so it works for the for the owners of these Absolutely. all inclusive, but for the people it's not um, it's not working. It's certainly it's not working. It's not working, no. Yeah. Uh, it works for some because the duty drivers and so on and the drivers and, and so that's on very will competitive. Tell you, will tell you that they're making more money now than ever because because, you know, a lot of things are happening because they everybody have new buses and so on. But uh, when you look at the workers in the hotels the craft because vendors the craft vendors Things like that they're they're not they're not they're, they're not seeing the connection. Mm. Um, although although we have made some expansion because we essentially doubled the capacity of on the pier by having them the craft vendors come out mm. onto the promenade that walkway leading mm. from um, Margaritaville, and at the same time over by the Reynolds Pier, we've mm. been able to um, have vending over there also which never exists before by the way mm. so I, those are my, all my advocacy because you know I'm chairman of the cruise ship council right, right. Uh, so it will double so so if you miss them if you mm. if the if the vendors miss the tourists by the tourists not coming into their um craft market mm. at least they get an opportunity mm. on the pier mm. and that's a big thing because on the it, within the market itself uh, but why yeah. the tour is not going into? Oh, hold, let me take a break and come back because yeah. even the craft markets up here and so on and do. Because yeah. I'm in Hochi every time the cruise ship comes yeah. in, and I, I see what's happening. Mm-hmm. The tour is really not going into the craft it's markets. Not so, so let me let me take a quick break. Okay. And in studio with me, Michael Belnavis, who is the um, candidate, councillor candidate, JLP for um, North East Saint Anne. Um, no stranger to this space, and uh, no stranger to the. Wedding African family. Um, Michael, we were talking about um, the craft vendors. And um, y- y- you're pointing out that this is also one of your concerns, right? Yes. Um, I-, I hear you saying that something has been done at the pier uh-huh. to ensure that craft vendors who are there, but it- but you have to be at the pier. What about the other outposts, like the craft vendors up the here in Pineapple and the different markets across um, Northeast? Well, you have the food market and you have the actual craft markets, mm-hmm. plural. Um, it's, 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 uh, they're in a bad, bad situation because, and they know, you know, because I've had, I've worked with them over the years and I've, uh, if me, I, more than anyone else, um, I've advocated for them. But there are some fundamental issues in the infrastructure, the homogeneity of the products, um, the, the, just the commitment from the drivers to come there. This payola system that is entrenched. Well, the payola system yeah. that is entrenched. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Okay, that is where the drivers pay, get paid from the vendor to bring their guests to the location. And, 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 and which vendor can afford that? So which well, vendors that, usually are doing that? Well, uh, <laughs> most, most, if you want, if you want drivers to come to your place, you have to essentially Pay them, and in payment, it could be you know to give them uh, if it, it's a restaurant, they get um, the meal and or a percent of the, the, the dining for the people that they bring. So this is, I think, this is a crux of the matter, and you are yeah. aware of it. You say that it's entrenched. Yeah. Um, what are we can? What can be done about it? Obviously, there's something that the cruise ship association, of which you're a chairperson, uh-huh. can do, can't you? Well, we've been trying to get some moral suasion going in that we say. But that okay. now work. <laughs> a lot of time it's going on that yeah, now yeah. work. It, 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 yeah. it's, it's, well, it's not, it's not easy because, uh, for, for one, the cruise companies themselves do not want to send people to the craft shops. They've put, they've put it in writing and we've had meetings to discuss it and they showed me the letter from the cruise, um, the, the FC, FCCA. What, 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 what's the reason? Saying that they don't want to come because of harassment, look and feel of the place, the place not up to scratch, um, the, 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 the homogeneity of the product. In other words, everybody is selling the same thing. Um, it's not a good experience for the guests, things of that nature, a lot of complaints. You know, so it's a very negative letter that was gotten, gotten. Ed Bartlett wanted to have, uh, uh, um, another market built where, where they, right beside the jerk center, 
um, to, inc- to, to incorporate artisans and make it artisans village, um, as they did in, in Trelawney and mm. the vendors said they didn't want that. Oh. They wanted to stay at the same location that they're at. And I said to them, but this one is so, it's the overall the utility of it because there's so many new, um, because the population has increased and there more vendors. So you need more space and you need a new, and you need to look at a whole new approach to this thing. It can't just be you're selling something. You need mm-hmm. to have an experience. Mm-hmm. So experience has to be when you come now, you have like entertainment. It's, you know, it's like a bazaar and it's, and oh, by the way, you're selling goods also and different mm-hmm. products and mm-hmm. so on. So it's not mm-hmm. just coming to buy two t-shirts. Yeah, we can learn something from places like Egypt on, on this. Uh, absolutely. I've, I've, I've always said it and the, the, the minute you say bazaar, yeah. but, but, but the, but it, it hurts me so though because so the cruise ship has said that yeah. the, there was a, so you have that on the one hand and you have the other hand where the, um, the payola system. Yeah. Um, and it, 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 it's, 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 it's awful. A re- it's, a re- it's a recipe for, for, uh, for failure in, as in its current, what about, in its current state. Yes. So what's your suggestion in terms of what are you, what can you do with well, your, with your team, with the member of parliament? What can you My do? suggestion is that we move ahead with a new approach to the tourism product. Um, we low look at a whole new approach in the sense that we go ahead and put together this, this um, artisan village. The village has to incorporate um, entertainment. It has to incorporate selling of products, both food. It's a, gastronomy has to be a, a part of it. So you have little restaurants in there also, uh, public-private partnerships. So you have little stalls, people selling foods. So in other words, when you come to there, it's an experience. It's not just because coming to buy some T-shirts or some junk or beads or something of that nature. Mm-hmm. It has to be where you come in for entertainment, you come in for food, you have the clothes there, you have the shoes, the, the trinkets and so on. Mm-hmm. Bob Marley, Bob Marley, people come in and they have a little Bob Marley thing there. Appleton come in and they have Appleton experience there. Where do you see this happening in, in terms of? Right by the, right by the jerk center, the UDC lands. The jerk, which jerk center? The Ochoa's jerk center right here. Oh, all of yeah. that is UDC lands? Yeah, right, yeah. It's just sitting there. But it's and not like it's a big, that's a big, that's a small yeah, huge acres. That is, oh, it go I back say, inside. Go, yeah, man, right. And they're building up a, a two high rise right there. Uh, mm. So you're looking at, I would say that at about four acres of land, mm. adequate for parking, for buses mm. to come in, and um, and that would just transform mm. um, that entire space. And then this space. could absorb the 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 the. the the craft, the craft vendors who are in the other craft right. markets. Right. So, yeah. So, in other words, they lost, they lost to leave where they are, and that's the problem. Oh. Nobody wants to leave where the existing place. But the interesting thing is that it's not far from anywhere. It's else not far. It, it's, 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 uh, yeah, and it's right on the main. Mm. You know, I, you know, the funny thing. I, I, when I sat down, I explained to them, I, I showed them the vision, and I said, "Well, I like the mm. vision, but we don't, we don't want to leave here. We can't do it right here." Mm. I said, "No, it's too small." I would like to hear from the craft vendors why they're saying no, because yeah. um, on the face of it, 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 it makes sense. Yeah. Um, in that way, would that satisfy the the cruise shipping um, Absolutely. issue? Well, Absolutely. How, what about the payola? How would that well, you know, mitigate? You know, um, if, a, if business is demanding, you ever, ever seen uh, outside of a supermarket, the uh, taxi men converge? The, the higglers converge and people converge out of the supermarket. If, if it's a popular supermarket mm-hmm. and the one that's mm-hmm. not popular, there's no taxi man out there for walk. <laughs> that type true. of thing. Yes. Once the business, it, you create the, you create the, the demand pull. Mm. So in other words, the, 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 all of those drivers going have to come there because what? Mm. Everybody going to want to come there. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, you create that thing. So you have to depend on, 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 on sucking up to the driver and say, look, you know, give you a hundred dollars if you mm. bring one person or whatever the case may be. They'll bring their people because the people will be demanding to hear about this new, well, um, the bottom line for me, y- the bottom line for me that uh, at least you have a solution to it. Yes. And, and on the face of it, it don't sound, sound like a bad solution. Mm. Um, I'm very concerned about the craft vendors and the fact that they have been left. Mm-hmm. You know, just hanging like that, um, and then the, obviously the payola system. We have been hearing about this forever. Mm-hmm. forever. This is, that is similar to the media, mm-hmm. but uh, it's, it's something that has to be cauterized. So, so then um, I want to go back quickly to access to the beaches because I'm not quite sure. All right, so we have a lot of the beaches that are now locked off. I heard you saying that the the um, the system isn't working. The all inclusive system that um, denies the public entrance to the beaches. Yeah. Is there something uh, uh, concrete that you have planned to address it? Well, uh, the, the idea is that we want to develop all the existing public spaces um, that will accommodate as many people as possible. 
um, that are and, and insist that it's free to the public. Little Duns River, there are areas along the coastal driveway, mm-hmm. which um, there are beaches there. That don't bond the it, that right? Don't, right? That don't bond it, that can be developed. Right. And then it, it and it's all UDC lands. Okay. So yeah, so if we if we can move along that spirit, because I think the horse has already gone through the gate in terms of the all inclusive. That that you know, so I don't think that can be reversed. Let us but say that I can't. More space. All right, but those spaces with, exist, yeah. and we know those spaces exist. But we see them being fenced off e- even as we speak. Uh so well, well, if, in, even if, in, yes, if, well, even if they're fenced off, mm-hmm. they're UDC, and it's up to the government and the new member of parliament that's coming, Matthew Samuda. Uh, to make For it the happen. election one already? No, no, it hasn't yet. But Matthew Samuda is a new member of parliament. No, did I say that? Yeah, it's you did say that. probably a Freudian slip. No, Marcia is a member of parliament. So, but, so, so uh, whoever, the, no, well, you know, you just yeah. discount the PNP totally. Uh, well, oh, that, oh, you know, oh gosh. Mm. Well, don't end the I don't understand the word. But, uh, <laughs> So, so you're saying it's so, so this, but, but from where you stand, you've lived in the era, you live, you work, you just, you live and breathe this era, you know exactly how it works. Yes. I hear you saying that this point you're making about what can be done in, in making, uh, building new roads into, into a lot of these spaces that still exist on the coastline that whether them fence are or not, mm-hmm. there's still UDC place, spaces, yes. that this is something that can practically be done. Of course. All right. Uh, the reason why they fence are because they don't want to squat in, but, um, and it, cause people just going, People like the front page, you know, so let us go and set up a thing and it's hard to remove people once they're on. Mm-hmm. But, uh, the space is there. The town is, is, is just starting to really come into its own. Mm-hmm. And, um, you're going to see where it, uh, it's just going to take off within the next few years. I've always said that this is yeah. a place to be, um, to live, work and, and grow your children. And so many people are coming into this space now, mm-hmm. uh, that it, it has, it has just started to really mushroom and mm-hmm. ultras in particular and, and surrounding areas are going to see the, the boom. Is it, you, have you seen the development that's going on in, in the place? I see the development, but at the point you made earlier is that, well, you have the development on the one hand, but mm-hmm. you, and, and there's some people who are benefiting, but on the other hand, we have poverty still growing. Yeah. And you talk about skilled workers, you talk about opening, um, or, 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 or uh, tapping into existing, um, training centers, um, not quite sure how the heart NTA, um, is working in terms of getting people who need to be trained, trained, how, or people can access those places. But we hear this whole conversation about the prime minister says it and he says it a whole lot. We don't have the necessary skills. Well, you know, come but on, um, I, I don't believe that's still enough, but, yeah. um, no, the, the skills yeah. get is here and, um, you know, the, the school system is, is great down this side. Um, we have we're the best, the best high schools are right here in St. Anne, you know, with Westwood and Hilders and so on. Top five in Jamaica. York so, you know, Castle and York so on. York Castle and so on. Mm. Uh, uh, of course. Yeah, they uh, know. You're going to put Castle. I don't know. You know, right? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, it's and a, we see Audrey's High doing so well. So there are a lot, yes. of, pe- lot of schools in this uh-huh. region that are turning out mm-hmm. um, a lot of children who are educated. But we still have a lot of children, a lot of students who are, t- who are leaving school, who still, especially boys, who still can't read. Uh, who the uh, education system is living behind, especially those who are attending the non-traditional high schools. Yeah, Marcus Garbage did a fantastic job um, with the new principal there. Yes, yes, um, yes. You know, and really turning we around that school. You know, yes. Ochi, you mentioned Ochi High. I'm yeah. at every graduation for the last yeah. 10 years. They're doing pretty well now. They're doing fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they need more space. Uh, their their um, athletic um, yeah. um, system could be a little, you know, more. So why are we saying that we do not have the necessary people to fill the, the the positions? Why are we saying that? Well, maybe they're not trained, but then again, um, the, the, the position, the jobs that are created along the coast here mm. are really low end. Mm. Now, um, with the advent of the development, I expect that some, you know, the call centers and so on are one step above. Mm-hmm. Um, so working in a store and things of that nature, but still relatively low end. Mm-hmm. We have to move into more technology you now. Mm-hmm. We have to move into more um, agricultural stuff, um, utilizing f- uh, factories and so on. It's not mm-hmm. just factory workers and so on, you know, because mm-hmm. when we say um, factories, it could be it could be high tech factories too. Mm-hmm. You know, where it takes a greater skill set to do some of these things. So, what is your vision for agriculture? That is. And you raise it just now. Say, Satan is not just tourism. Mm-hmm. Satan in the hills of Satan, not necessarily an ultras per se, mm-hmm. but you know, a garden, a garden, um, development in the backyard is, is so important mm-hmm. because, um, I don't know if you realize that 
majority of chicken in Jamaica is not from best dress or CB. You know, it's from the lady, mom and pop, people raising their little chicken. That's, okay. that's the biggest part of the business. People don't talk about it. Mm. But if everyone was to do some chicken rearing, some planting a tree or two, Mm-hmm. And one tree can send the children to school, you know. Mm-hmm. One lighty tree. Yes. You know, because it's too much mm-hmm. a pound, so lighty. We should light it. Lighty there sometimes? Yeah. What are you talking about? Oh, we can't get some soccer. Uh, right so up, a whole different right. interview. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> um, we can't get lighty right, soccer. Right, right, it's really, I think the hills, that's really St. Mary's side. St. Mary's come from, which other St. Mary's side? Right now, I'm right up by Gale side. So I planted a whole, I make a farm up there and I plant a whole bunch of them. So I get some lighty soccer now? I work up one. Although never make a politician do you a favor. Right. <laughs> but anyway, I'm a virgin. We can't beg him last year. All right. So, um, it's, so you also have a vision for agriculture. Yes. Uh, you know, I really want to see, uh, you know, we hear a lot before elections. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be very fair to you. I've, we, we, I've interviewed you many, many times. Yeah, man. And, uh, to be fair to you, anything we talk about, if you're not know, started, you, you push for it to be started or mm-hmm. you start it and complete it. Absolutely. This is my experience with you. Thank you. So, um, and, and, and so in, in, in that regard, be, bearing in mind what you've just said, um, you talk about what you're going to be doing, um, regarding access to the beaches, Little mm-hmm. Duns River in particular, and then other, other areas. You mm-hmm. talk about the craft vendors. Now you're talking about agriculture. You're, you're not, you're, you're, you're looking at, um, the extent to which all inclusive um, tourism is negatively impacting yeah. um, uh, the, the the people of this area, and so that, that there's a whole lot on your plate. Do you mm-hmm. have a, a a time frame in which you you expect to begin to to to, to deal Absol- with some of these? Ab- absolutely. Um, uh, the, you have to work within a time a five year time span because mm-hmm. things take time to happen. That's why I said I've only been here for one term. Mm-hmm. It was a long one term, but still one term. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we're able to, we got a lot of the things that we're able to do done. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so for the next dispensation, I uh, we spoke about it, the agriculture, mm-hmm. um, you know, with, with sports for, for the, for the young people, mm-hmm. um, issues associated with craft vending that we want mm-hmm. to ensure that, you know, they, they get a whole new space. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, issues associated with the beaches and so on, mm-hmm. with Little Dunn's River. Mm-hmm. Those are things that I expect to get right off the bat mm-hmm. within the next five years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not into the 90 day thing. Mm-hmm. Five years. <laughs> right. We hear you within the next five years. Yeah. Um, it, it's a lot. So, so we, we, we listen closely to what you're saying. What mm-hmm. kind of a, a, a power, an authority does a, a councillor and even if the councillor is named mayor later on mm-hmm. have in, in, in these, in these issues, Dom? Uh, it depends on the, it depends on the person. As far as I'm concerned, you have to have a, a mayor that has a connection with the business community, that has mm-hmm. connection with the party mm-hmm. uh, that is running the government. Mm-hmm. So, in other words, um, you have relationship with some of the ministers. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to ensure that you, you yourself, have, you're, as an individual, you have some level of credibility and, and respect out there by the people. Mm-hmm. So you can do the moral suasions and so on to ensure that people react to you know your 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 decisions and your influence mm-hmm. out there. For example, um, if we, we have always, we, you recall when Ochoas was main, the, the, the tourism town, in the best tourism town, mm-hmm. because we were able to get all the taxes off the road. They had to conform to a certain uh, regulation. Mm-hmm. They come to the transportation center. We had, to, there was no vending in the mm-hmm. town. It bothered to be. And when um, you say all the taxes off the road, just so there's no misunderstanding, mm-hmm. to get order. Order in order. terms of how traffic was, was, was order, um, yeah, traffic flow mm-hmm. and so on. We had the transportation yeah. center open, we put mm-hmm. lights in there so they, you know, they were able to go into the transportation center and they were mm-hmm. said after six o'clock, they mm-hmm. could come out to the transportation center once the blue light was going by the police there. Mm-hmm. So we had a, a good synergy going with the constabulary force and things. So everybody knew that after six o'clock, mm-hmm. you could do vending, the jerkman could come out and so on. Everybody had a, like, we had an order. Mm-hmm. Kind of one order running in, in the town. Mm-hmm. Uh, we created additional spaces for mm-hmm. vending within the transportation center mm-hmm. periphery and within the market periphery and within the parking lot themselves. Mm-hmm. So that created a lot of, a lot of entrepreneurial, um, uh, development where so people were able to get their, you know, start a business, little, mm-hmm. little shops and so on. Mm-hmm. So then drinks and stuff like that. Um, I, I, you know, and okay. but, but the thing is that they were, they took them off the street. 
Yeah. So there was no congestion and so on. But, oh, uh, yeah, and that, that was brilliant. That was mm-hmm. brilliant because you could be in the traffic in yeah. Ochoa for three hours just trying to reach around Ochoa to come up here. So, so, um, but we see an, a new thing happening though where the traffic has backed up again. Right. Where, um, the, the housing boom, if you'll call it, where there's mm-hmm. so many houses going up, so many businesses going up, where now we have a, 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 a similar thing happening. To what we saw in Ochi, like if you're coming from Miami Bay, for example, uh, or anywhere in St. Anne's Bay to Ochi, you said, you know, any given time of the day, you can be in traffic for shoo, forever, right, Big mm-hmm. A? <laughs> <laughs> so Big A, I know, every side, to every yeah. side. Why are you coming into Ochi? Yeah, yeah, so, so yeah. what is, what, do we need a bypass? Another bypass, a bypass, a bypass? Well, that, that's not by, the by, that's not a bypass anymore, that's a mainstream road. Right. Uh, what we look, that from the Prime Minister has promised us, Mm-hmm. Uh, that they will be doing, um, I, I know, a, a, an, enhan- an enhancement to the road from Montego Bay mm-hmm. all the way through to Ochoas and mm-hmm. to include Land Overy and, you know, that whole space we need into White River mm-hmm. itself. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. That has to be a, a big priority. Um, that probably will happen within the next five years also. Um, well, let's just watch but, and see. And no five year plan are going right. So remember, so we normally keep them tape and play them back for everyone. No, ever. Amen. You know, amen. we work right here. So, so quickly, we don't because we're running out of time. Uh-huh. The, um, Marcus Garvey, because I know one of, you know, along with Shiny yourself, that one of the things that you worked on closely that never the really Marcus happened Garvey was house. the Marcus Garvey house. Yes. yes the birthplace. Yes. So we're sing, we're, we're in sync. Mm. No, it happened, you know. It's a gabo. It what happened? happened? Uh, Prime Minister came down uh, along with Olivia Babsy Grange and mm-hmm. they handed out, handed over a house to the, 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 the sister, the, mm-hmm. the, not the sister, the, one of the, one of the siblings. Oh, two of the siblings. Two of the siblings. Yes, yeah. I know about that. But, right. but, but, so but, that was, that was done. So they got the house in St. Anne's Bay. Uh, the, the house but, itself but, that is, was Marcus Garvey's birthplace mm-hmm. is to be developed as a national shrine. So the house is empty now? The house is, well, there are people there, but it, it is, as far as I understand, it is now the property of the ministry of, of, um, Babsy Grains' ministry. Of, of culture. So culture. when, yeah. when are we going to see the, it, the it change? Mm-hmm. Well, yes. What's going to happen? Right. And when? As far as I'm, con- as far as I understand, it is in the, in the works right now. It's in the works right now. So you can, you can see that within the next few years also, because that has to be, it's not just a house that's going to be built. It's going to be a national shrine and so on. And, you know, it's going to be a place where tourists can come and see people who support that whole, um, is Marcos Garvey's, um, legacy, uh, and which is a very important legacy because he's our first national hero, hero and so on. And you are a big, 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 big advocate of that. And, you know, I know that, uh, your entity here at IRFM does something every year. And when we do it at the Municipal Corporation, we always ensure that you're there because you guys are, you know, really know. Even, if you like Pe- even if you don't like Miss Peach, you invite me to talk. I know, I see you. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, thank no, you. Yeah, but, but it's true. We work together. And I, yeah. I really appreciate the fact that you mm-hmm. are willing to come in and sit down, knowing that there are many things that we don't agree on. Yeah. But at the same time, we can have a, 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 an amicable conversation without crossing and quarreling. Right, Big but, 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 you know, Gabu, <laughs> we're singing from the same hymn book, essentially. Because must, I say, we're for, it's, listen, it's, Ochi thing, you know, it's a, it's a packed in Ochi, you know, cause the Ochi people, it's a small town. I was in right. town going, and we're, we always say, boys, we're Ochi people. Right. And it's that's a, it's a PMPR jail piece. Exactly. Uh, we are Ochi people. Exactly. And you this know? is the thing that I think, um, you understand very well, yeah. and some others understand very well. Please tell, um, Matthew Samuda that we're still inviting him to this space because we're Ochi people. Yeah, we're Ochi we people. You know, yeah, yeah we yeah. don't have a color problem. No, we I, see I, everything I, I, Irish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, no thanks. pun intended there, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Michael Belnavis. Thank you to the sisters for coming in. And uh, we couldn't send and see us inside as I come. Let me lose. <laughs> I, I see where the sisters were really looking at me seriously that if me did ever say anything that out of the way, I'm sorry for me inside that today. But uh, thank you so much. Well, thank you so and, much. Um, my pre- my, I really appreciate it. We look forward it. to to having another conversation with you, to hearing more about what your plans are. And then probably, uh, no matter what happens after the elections, 
please come and have a conversation with us, all right? Super. All right. Michael Bell Navis. I agree. Yeah. Making way now for the big inside of the Sunday Sunshine. Thank you so much for joining us on the 107s Everywhere, how you join us. Thank you so much for writing in, tweeting in, for listening in. Thank you to Shamara Preston for coming in. Thank you so much, Shamara. And the Big A is um, getting ready. Big A, did you see the Bob Marley movie? Oh, yeah. You see, my mic all attacking on a gun. You see, is, this is the point we're making. Yeah. Right, because... Well, I'm going to turn on the microphone. Nobody not here, you know. What are you saying to me, you know? Saying be, because you have BNP beard. You're still getting there. You're still getting there. All right. And then things are going... What good, my friend? Thank you. You see, I did hear this now because... There's some things I'm going to say, well, good, my sister. Yeah, man. All right, don't come shake me hand. Listen, I, I know the protectors of Michael Bell Navis. <laughs> anyway, so, Big A, did you see the movie? No. Not yet. Neither me. Neither me. So, we can't even have a conversation about it. No. Lord Sanbury seemed to come out with something saying, now that he has seen it, um, he's encouraging everyone to see it. He doesn't agree, it seems, with a lot of what is being said out there. Oh, and okay. we and we we respect Lloyd Stanbury's perspective most times. Yes, we do. Yes, so we certainly, we certainly do. So we'll go with Uncle Lloyd and and go see it. Yes, form your form your own opinions. It, it mm. is, um, I believe, like any other Jamaican movie, we should we should support it because mm-hmm. um, it is another. That's it my is problem. Industry mm-hmm. that you are yet to exploit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we need to support it. We yeah. we need we need to we need to um, have more of these movies because I believe that there are several other, many other mm-hmm. Jamaican stories to be told, and um, this is a good catalyst. This is a good start. Yeah, and if you know if this work, mm-hmm. it would it will ignite the flame. And I saw um, Amen One also. Uh, you remember Amen One? Uh, one. You remember One? You can't say Amen One now. Um, one who used to be here, man, with us um, doing some of the programs. Let uh, me remind you shortly. But um, so he has written about um, seeing a movie also and taking a similar perspective like um, like Lloyd Stanbury. So, and these so are two Mackie people Contrast that are... Is, 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 yeah. Who? Mackie Contrast, remember? Oh, what Mackie? did you say? Maki is is endorsing the movie, saying that okay. you know, he saw it. Mm. He saw it, mm-hmm. and um, he's actually encouraging mm-hmm. all Jamaicans to to go out and see. It. He says he does not agree with all of the um, the, the, the critics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this and and this is a point. I'm I'm reading people whose opinions I trust, and uh, a lot of them are saying this. Um, whereas at the same time, Kishima saw it. What is she saying? See it and all, Kishima too. So we're not done. Oh yeah, so. Kishima saw it last night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's that. All right. Well, I got a call late last night though from uh, a professor who we interview many times in this space, who um, is Dr. Godfrey Vincent, mm-hmm. and um, he said it's a whitewashing mm-hmm. of Bob Marley's um, story. So, so you have that. You have that on one hand. Um, on, on the on the other hand, though, majority are saying. Go see it for yourself because this is just one segment of Bob Marley's life. And, you know, you probably need five, six, seven more movies, but this is just one element of it. Well, as as um, Dr. Taylor says, you know, all this noise, it's all Marley gripe and fluxicum. <laughs> oh, no, that was Dr. Taylor. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Taylor. Marley, oh, Marley gripe <laughs> and <laughs> fluxicum. <laughs> Marley gripe, we love that. Yeah, I didn't see that. Marley. All right, well, I'm going to see the movie um, in short order. And when I do, I'll come back and give my, my report on what I, what I think about the movie. But most people that I know whose opinions I trust who have seen the movie have said, listen, it's all Marley gripe and Flaxy complaint. <laughs> so go see the movie for yourself as we make way for the big game. By the way, Vibes Cartel trial, you're following that? Yes. I am following. And you agree that... Um, with 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 the eminent lawyer, well, my it, friend Bert Samuels. It, 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 it does it does seem at this point to be tilting in the favor of of Carter. But you know how trials go. They go right, back. right. Well, you're watching it closer. I'm not following you. Know, not, so. not not as intensely as I 
could have mm-hmm. because I'm distracted with many mm-hmm. other things. And we're talking about the appeal, not the trial, but the vibes can't tell appeal, just, just in case people right. wonder what we're talking about. Right. 